Welcome to Moonbase 2. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Moonbase 2 podcast. My name is Andy, Decayed Andy, and I'm joined this week by the man who has thousands of dogs. It's Mikey Dog Wolf E3. It's a rough life. <laughs> oh, I, oh, oh, I see it, what you did there. We don't, we don't <laughs> practice anything like that. That was spontaneous and natural. Oh, oh, I'm sure a load of our listeners have literally just killed themselves listening to that joke. As they should. But just start drinking bleach. It's the, it's your over. life before me. <laughs> Sacrifice in the name of Mikey. Give me your lives. Oh my god. How's it going, Mikey, apart from taking people's souls and lives? Ah, uh, Grant, um tired as all balls, but <laughs> Grant Not all not all balls. Oh all no. balls. No. Well, at least they're not old balls. Old balls will come in time. We all get them. We all get them. This is going down an interesting alley. It is. Uh, so, we're going to be talking about Transformers this week, as ever. Uh, we've got some <laughs> third-party news. We may as well kick off with that. Mm. Iron Factory are doing some Legend-scaled Leo Kaiser figures, which I feel we talked about at one point. Uh, we saw the promo for... I, I, I know at least Leo Kaiser, but I don't think we've seen the individual robots because they do not look familiar to me. Well, now we have, because uh, Iron Factory show off... Uh, I think these are color renders, so they're not yeah. like the real boys yet. Uh, they're gonna, they will be released as IF Iron Factory dash sixty five to seventy. That being, of course, Le- uh, Leo Kaiser, Guy Hawk, Hellback, Kill Bison, and Jaruga. No Death Cobra though. Unfortunately, Boo! hopefully they'll, hopefully they'll rectify that. Hopefully that'll be that'll come out after the fact. Yep. Like the main, oh. the main breast force will come out, and then Death Cobra as a special. Like, all he has to do is just like, hey, here's the breath force, here's another dude who turns into an arm. That's all you need. Yeah, or a gun. Maybe do, do him like um like uh, the C-Cons. Yeah, like that. that could that be idea. Cool. That could work. Yeah, because then he wouldn't interfere with the uh, the design aesthetic and look of Leo Kaiser, and then he's mm. actually still interactable. Uh, we have images of the robot modes, of the ca- uh, of the vehicle modes. Uh, the description says that they're very cartoon accurate, which I, I guess it's true. Uh, yeah, I sure. I okay. will believe that because I... Remember their heads and not much else. Um, I, I think generally that's th- this is how they look. I remember Leo Kaiser looking like that. Mm. Uh, obviously, they're going to be legend scale as mentioned. Vehicle modes look fun. Are we going to get repaint of this into the G two version? Sorry, the uh, the Rescue Force version. I should oh, say. Oh God! G1.5. Technically, you'd have to remove two of them, wouldn't you? Uh well, no, because and then what you do their is you arms do this... and head, and replace the arms with like uh, of the the combiner re- big rescue rot, bot, whatever his name was, to no, into like grabby claws. You do, you do claws. the smart thing. You do no, what grabby the smart, claws. You, you do the smart thing, which uh, G two, uh, oh sorry, uh, G one point five rescue force should have done is do the two missing characters, mm. and maybe like instead of, ha- of like removing the breast uh, transforming robot gun things. Make new ones relatable to a uh, rescue force. No, right? I like I like my way better. No, yours is stupid. <laughs> my way is full of joy, and yours tell- is the corporate version, which yep. is dumb. Yep, but they people want you and accuracy, Andy. No, they do. You know they do. No. And I know, G1 I hate accurate, them. <laughs> G1 accurate, big rescue robo thing is a mishmash of bad ideas. I, I hate those people that want G1 accuracy. Well, I don't hate them. I hate them because Hasbro only caters to them. If that was like the Studio mm. Series line, mm. fine. If the if the Generations line was something a little bit different, I'd be much better with it. If there, if there was two lines, because there are technically two lines, well, more than two lines going. If there was two different design styles going for the main line, that would be fine, but they don't want to do that. And... Accuracy is going to be slightly ironic later on. Yeah, oh, fuck, I know. I was so annoyed by that. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. <laughs> uh, what do you think of uh, the Iron... Generally, me and you like the Iron Factory stuff, yeah, so we yeah. don't have massive amounts. The biggest fail- failing Iron Factory ever did was he cancelled their anime girl line. Yep, that was a great line, full of endo- it was endearing great... designs and We got hilarious. two molds? Two, we three. Got two, three. Th- two? Two molds and th- one with retooled into three characters. 
Yeah, that's right. Which was bullshit because they could have done loads more. And yep. they should have done loads more because it was a really cute We never even life. got Slipstream. We didn't. Uh, no, we did. No, they we... gave her a really giant head. Oh, no, we got Hailstorm. Yeah. We got no. Hailstorm, not Slipstream. I don't, all I know is I didn't get the ones I wanted. Yeah, we we definitely it was a we got a repaint of uh, Windblade into female Starscream, uh, and she had a really giant head. I'm googling that. Iron yeah, factory. she had a gigantic Slip head stream. and the weird raisin boobs. Shrike's feather. You're right. I'm wrong. Yep. How it wow. happens? It happens. I, the, I her head is the huge. Reason, that's the reason why I remember it because the head was really weird, really weird. I'd completely... Oh, someone's got, like, a group shot. Okay, so, for the group shot, for reference, you've got, uh, Windblade. Two Windblade. No, three Windblades. No, no, I'm going through. you got Windblade. You've got, okay. uh, Combiner Hunter Windblade, which is the red and gold version. You've got yeah. Clear Plastic Windblade. Oh, I forgot about that one. <laughs> you've got RC. You've got, yes. uh, Hunter's RC, which is the black one. You've oh, got, yeah. uh, Slipstream. You've got Alita One, and you've got Nightbird. I was gonna say Nightbird had to be there. That was it, wasn't it? Yep. No one else. No new molds. Could Shame. Well, I, I like him. Striker. We could have gotten Striker out of this. Sure, we could have got a lot of grills. anime girl Striker. <laughs> could have got loads of grills. Can you imagine? Uh, no. I, I imagine anime girl Striker as that like, if you've ever seen that high school anime of that like unusually tall, muscular woman who's like really deep voiced and she's just like, "Hi, I'm 14. Like and um, she, there's always Mikey, a character I, I, like I, I, that. I don't want to. I don't want to tell a character you. Like that. I don't want to tell you. Spoil this for you, Mikey. But that's a man, baby. <laughs> as I pull off the wig. <laughs> yeah, baby. Okay. <laughs> Somehow, Austin Powers has shown up in anime, and I'm not approving of that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they could do an anime based on young Austin Powers in <laughs> Japan High School. Oh my that could kind god! Of work. That would be an experience. It would be. Uh, it would be. Uh, but yeah, Iron Factory, I think generally we're pretty positive on. How do you think these guys look? I think they look pretty sick. I think they look good. Um, yeah. I really like the proportions. I think the proportions are excellent. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think the colors are great. Um, and I think the I, like I, I think the head sculpts are my favorite part. Uh, I think they're mm -hmm. really characterful. Um, Kill Bison is, for some rude reason, always my favorite of them. Not just because he's called really? Kill Bison. It's just the, the the aesthetic. I think his colors are not some of the nicest. But you actually um, like the toffee brown. I like the toffee brown when it's not gold oh, okay. plastic. Um, oh wow, that's a given. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I yeah, I like how these guys have turned out a lot. Um, I want to see the uh, Lyo Kaiser. I am mildly terrified of how the price will turn out. Ah, <laughs> uh, um, yeah, it'll probably be at least ooh, how much? How much was the full um, uh, J, uh, JD? J T D J D oh, team. They that were was a, a couple of hundred easy. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, I'd say it's it probably going to be the same here because there's an extra member here. They're yeah. not as big as the D J D, but mm -hmm. there's an extra member, so it'll probably kind of work out roughly like, about the same price, like two hundred or something. Yeah, looking at the jets, I think um, Hellbat and Guyhawk are retools of each other. Yeah, they are. Um, mm, yeah, well, that makes uh, sense. Uh, uh, Leozak seems to be original. Uh, Kill Bison and the Rhino guy, Drillhorn, Drillhorn. Yes. Um, they're they look like they're probably retools of each other, and Jeruga's yeah. his own guy, which makes sense because like you've got two hands, two legs, and a torso and a yeah and a upper body, so that it would make sense that the, the two central ones are original moles. Mm -hmm. Still can't believe we never got that Combiner Wars Leo Zach. I know we only got the really crappy one. I'd still get the combiner. I like I like the um actual Lyo Kaiser. As what, a the, the, redo, as a the redo of uh, thi oh, you mean when yeah. these combine, not yeah. as uh, just no, Skylinks, no. not okay. as not as like Skylinks version of the Tsars, because I think yeah, that's that was just bad. like well, we needed to use a mold. And just like you yeah, could have just yeah. used Silverbolt. You could. <laughs> I know I don't want you to, but you could have. Oh yeah, because oh my god, so much. can we talk about a meme that needs to die? Which me? Which the me? every oh. toy that comes out is a retool of Combiner War Silverbolt. It wasn't funny then. Is, is that a meme? I've never it, seen that. I can't. Well, at least not for years. My God, I saw it this week. I saw it I this do. week uh, for Scourge. We'll talk about it. 
Yeah, so is he we'll a retool and combine later. more silver bolt? I don't we'll know. We'll talk about it later. Uh, yeah. But yeah, um, this team, solid. Uh, looks really good. Will they be expensive? Yes, they are third party. They're an established company third party, so it will be, will be expensive. But again, Iron Factory usually do decent quality products. So it makes sense. Uh, if you're after a Leo Kaiser in a smaller format scale, then this is the one for you, I suppose. Mikey. Mm. What about the Metal Gate, who I've never heard of before? No, these guys seem to be new on the block. Uh, Metal Gate. Another one. <laughs> Maybe they're like the Metaverse. Maybe this is all an NFT. Um, they oh, no. have revealed a new figure called Haiku. Age of Extinction Triple Changer Drift. So if you remember in the movie, Drift was, for some bizarre reason, supposed to be a triple changer. Uh Ill, poorly conceived and ill-defined one. Um, he has a helicopter you see for three seconds. Um... You also know that I have a weird affection for Age of Extinction Drift. Um, it's not logical. It's not meaningful. It's not based on character depth or quality of design. It's, it's based on Vangelis. That's what it is. Based on It's based on a meme I helped create. <laughs> of him always speaking Mandarin. Um, which I am... I, I, know, I know we made it up, but I was also so disappointed when I saw that film and I just like, oh, he's just speaking English in a racist but accent. you knew that was going to be the case. You were crazy to think he was going to be decently I know. written. I know. But I, I also like that somehow they made Ken Watanabe, an actual Japanese man, sound like a white guy pretending to be Japanese. <sighs> that was so weird. Just like, it is Ken Watanabe, sir. He is a Japanese man. His name is Watanabe. Yep. And you made him sound like it was me being highly offensive. Yeah, it's mad. How I, did you yeah, do that? You, you're right. How did you do that? <laughs> anyway. Bad um, script, bad recording. I don't know. Bad, bad directing. direction would be what yeah. I'd say. No, Ken, like, say it the way you wish I wouldn't. Okay. <laughs> no, Ken, like this. <laughs> Make it more Japanese. <laughs> Have you been to Japan, sir? No, but we're pretending you haven't. <laughs> um... But anyway, so the robot mode is surprisingly well proportioned, I'll be completely honest. Um, it's got a lot of detail. Face sculpt looks really nice. Um, it, it's definitely this design, which is like, boy, howdy, a conversation piece. Um, comes with two swords that turn into propellers, and it looks like uh, the his back also has like smaller display swords that also form part of the helicopter. From the back, he looks incredibly busy. Like, hmm. he has a very busy design. More busy from the back than the front. Uh, vehicle mode, these are pretty rough prototypes, but it's kind of like Bugatti Veyron-ish. Like, as close as they could get without getting copyrighted. It it looks very messy. Uh, because, <laughs> and I'm saying that like, okay, prototype, but there's a point where I stop saying prototype and start saying like, you just, you're just a seam line, sir. You are a living seam line. Oof. And then... <laughs> Oh boy! I really wish I could say this was because of the prototype, but wow, that helicopter mode. Um, was he a triple changer in the movies? He was remember. very, was he? very, yeah. very, 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 very briefly. Okay. Um, but yeah, that wow, helicopter mode is a is it's a thing. You know how sometimes they say like, "What if a robot was just scrunched up?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he looks like he sh- he looks like like he's do you know the Tron cycle? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The way you sit in the Tron cycle. It looks like he's doing that, but with the front and the back of a helicopter. Oh, see, I was thinking it looked like that, but if you were trying to do that with human body parts stitched together. (laughs) Um, But, yeah. um, This is one of those things where, like, boy, if he was a shell former, we'd all be happier. (laughs) Maybe, maybe that's it. Maybe he forms this, and then you get two sh- uh, shells, and you just kind of <sighs> clamp it around, and it makes the actual helicopter. I know, but after seeing this, I kind of just wanted to be like, no, I'll fly there. Grabs a bunch of extra parts, hold them in front of his head. <laughs> Flying! Um, so what do you if think, Eddie? If it's a movie, he wouldn't grab extra parts. He'd grab dead body parts to do it. Yeah. Happened or, before. Or living ones. Oh, um, yeah. That would follow by dead. Um, but Andy, um... Uh, like I said, I think the robot mode is, is a pretty solid one for what they're trying, and I think the mm. car mode's fine. Um, what what do you think of the whole package? Yeah, the car mode is, like you say, super gappy. Uh, I assume slash hope that will be a little bit tidier for people who want this figure when it actually comes out. And I'm mm. sure it will be, because we know how prototypes usually go. They're usually not as good as finished product. Robot mode, it, it looks like drift. Uh, you know, if that's what you want, that's what you're going to get. Uh, helicopter, we've made fun of it for, uh, I, I like to think, decent reason. 
Um, I, I don't feel that there's a lot of options out there for, like, high-end drifts. Mm. I don't think. Not uh, really, as far as not I know. There's recent. a few There's a few upscales, I know, but... Yeah, but that's about it. So, I mm. guess this is the first one to tackle it, so it might either get the ball rolling for more drifts, or maybe you'll have to sell for this one if you really want this particular drift. So I guess it's fine. Mm. Obviously, don't do it for me, though. Do it for Andy. Oh my god. You should do other things for me instead, though. Horrible things. Mikey, oh X <laughs> X Transpots uh, have shown off the MX-38 Nightingale and the MX-37 Conan. Not the barbarian, the anime detective. Conan. Wondered. The adventurer, warrior without fear. It's not that one either. I like that. Uh, one. He had a piece I that everyone hated. Yeah, I hated that bird as well. He was a little shit. <laughs> he, he was T Bob levels of useless. Oh, come on. Everyone loves T Bob. No one like li- Jai likes T Bob. <laughs> Jai likes T Bob. Can we really judge Jai's taste? Yes. Yeah, constantly. <laughs> constantly. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, Nightingale, unsurprisingly, it's Minerva. And I think with uh, Conan, uh, you can figure out it's Nightbeat. So, we got images of the vehicle mode, robot mode, and uh, some little head face changes that you can make to their expressiones if you choose to uh these are not real images these are cad models as far as i can tell they don't look real at least to me uh but if you want a a little dip your toe into a more i guess a slightly more lady looking body proportion maneuver this might be a better one yeah this is an interesting one because they say i saw someone describe this as a light retool and i was just like light yeah everything as far as i can tell Bar the car kibble, and maybe the shoulders. I'm not sure. It depends on like the angles with, with night beer, night beat, and I'm not even sure there. But mm. everything's a new part above the knees. I they think really when people say retool, down. I think yeah. when people say retool, it's that idea of they are using the transformation scheme and everything else is different on it. But it is mm. essentially the same figure. Yeah, you it's, know, it's not going to transform differently. It's just like yeah. all the parts are different to make it look like a different character. That's fine. Mm. I don't mind that. Uh, it actually makes it look... It's it's good that it's not just a Hasbro... Oh, it's just a repart, uh, a reuse or a repaint or something like that. Because mm. it does give her a bit more of a distinct um, silhouette. X-Transpots, I don't think, are a company that we hear generally amazing things about. No, they started off before. with a fair history behind them. Um, mm. And it wasn't positive. And I believe they're still having QC problems. Oh. Um, but I think that certainly the CAD model designs look great. I do they really look, like the designs. They look okay. Yeah. I, um, I think Nightbeat's probably a better package for the, what you're getting. Um, Why do you say that? Well, like, accessory-wise for Minerva, you have open mount head, closed mount head, smiley face. Um, for Nightbeat, you get uh, cartoon face, you get comic face, you get that time in the comic he wore a fedora. You get the magnifying glass he wore as a fedora. Then you get like three IDW heads and the magnifying glass he used in IDW. I think, yeah, as a package, he comes with a lot more. Yeah, like, do you I'll think be... that's because Minerva doesn't have a lot of things to give <coughs> her? Well, there's one really obvious thing that is missing, even like, and I think it's kind of needed. Which one or what a, thing? A small French lady. Oh, now, yeah, it doesn't yeah. have to be a poseable small French lady. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, that's fair. Or, Something like, to pose with the car mode, right? Yeah, and then you, and then, and then, Andy. Oh no! You could have oh, included yeah. her in the Nightbeat package as a repaint. That's true. You could have, but no one wants to acknowledge that, Mikey. I no do. <laughs> I want but to acknowledge could, it so bad. Couldn't you just repaint this Minerva Nightingale figure, though? I mean, you could, but holy crap! <laughs> that's what you should do. If we're if we're going down that route, you should. Yeah, I, I think you're right about the accessory count. Uh, Nightbeat has better stuff with him. Mm. Um, if you want to go down, Gen- every time I look at uh, trans uh, uh, transbox X stuff, I always think it doesn't look like the highest quality of third party stuff. There's something always about the molding uh, that just doesn't do it for me visually. Mm. Uh, the shapes look kind of clunky together. Uh, it's just never been a, a company that has ever really made anything that I can that I can remember this current time where I've been like, "Ooh, that looks really good. I really want to get that." Every time it's just like a, "Yeah, okay, it's a it's a thing," and this is another one of those. Yeah, yeah it's it's a thing mm. uh, with both of them. Uh, but if you want them, they're gonna be there. It doesn't look like they're headmasters though, which is interesting. No, that's again 
not something you could have included if that was a if you had like a headmaster head like an the way I would have done it like as an extra head option you get a, a nice little simple Minerva headmaster but it's like this is show if you want show accurate head you've got this and then you've got one that's like it looks like it transforms but it's there if you want like a perfect transformation thing I think it's like one of the few that just don't like of these characters that just don't have a transforming head gimmick at all a headmaster mm. gimmick because most of the time you do these characters you go okay he's a headmaster because it's G1 and it must adhere to that uh, so I guess that's if you don't care about the headmaster gimmick I guess that's a, a new way to go I you know suppose. what I'm actually I know it's not accurate but I would like if the fedora worked with the IDW heads That'd be fun. Because yeah. it, it feels more like a him thing. It does. But I guess he never had it in the comic. It would be nice no, if it no, was no. interchangeable, though. It was, um, I, what was that from? It was from a comic. I don't remember what the comic was, but I know, I think it's a Marvel one. Or it might have okay. been a club comic. There, there was one really good club comic involving Nightbeat, Sludge, and Snarl, or Slag. I don't remember. Or Slug, or whatever the frick his name was at the time. <laughs> um... <laughs> But, um, and I, I remember that distinctly being like a really fun read, which hmm. is just like, holy crap, a club comic, that's enjoyable. What planet are we on? Um, cause it's basically just like, they're, they're trying to solve a crime and the marauders are there, except it's the really shit marauders. Oh. Like the obnoxiously shit marauders. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. so that was good crack. Okay. It's a Marvel thing. It's a Marvel thing. I'm just after checking. That's not super surprising, I suppose. Right. Mm. Oh, that no. Makes no. sense. Yeah, uh, Mikey, do you want to take us on to the next bit? A new company, yeah. I think. Yeah, Maybe? no, I saw this. I was really interested in this. So, uh, Lucky Cat MC zero two Riccio, uh, Ricky, Riccio. I think has something about building um, renders. So, R- uh, Mo- Lucky Cat are a company that sort of have been trying to do like the third part equivalent of what um, Beast Box are doing, um, presumably largely inspired by Beast Box. No, 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 sure, no, Andy, all original <laughs> ideas. Um, yeah. So what they did previously was a third party uh, Voltron, a uh, boxy Voltron. And it was basically, you had uh, the Voltron lines, they turned into a box, and those boxes then came together and made a Voltron. Um, did I it saw come a, out? Is it it did, out? I saw a review of it, it looked pretty good. Oh, all right. Yes. Um, so this is their attempt at uh, the same, but with Devastator. So this is going to be... Uh, Totally not ripping off 52 Toys Beast Box. Uh, square square transforming robots that will come in their own display box. Again, not something that uh, Beast Box would ever do. Um, sure. Yeah. Uh, and this is pretty involved. Uh, Beast Box have done a couple of combiners, but they're like two robot combiners. Um, this is... You got a simple robot mode. A very simple robot mode. Um, a stylized vehicle mode. Like, to the point where, like, I think that's... Is that supposed to be Long Haul? Who basically just kind of turns into a little brick tank. Um, They also, like, have extra accessories for the combining things that go on as extra parts. Um, Then they all turn into a cube. Some of them slightly more successfully than others. Mm. And then they all combine and form different limb parts. So, I do like the lay... I do like the layout of the, um... Uh, CAD models on this, like they go to a lot of detail to show each part, um, which is a nice thing to do. Uh, and then, yeah, they form a very stocky but not unattractive Devastator. It's an um, interesting look. It's not. It's not G one yeah. adherent, I suppose. No, no. Uh, obviously, like this is an early render because, like, it's po- I've seen the posability in the Voltron, which is better than standing there with your arms at your side. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, sure. It's got a little bit of an. I, I don't know, like, IDW anime-esque vibe to it in some places. Um, oh, I was going to say Pat Lee, proportion-wise. Uh, to be fair, there's a bit of Pat Lee in some of the IDW shots. Um, <laughs> does it come with a, with a dull surprise face? Um, God, I hope so. But yeah, it looks like the fists um, come, sort of act as um, accessories for... Uh, who is the... I don't know that one... Scavenger, I think. Um, but yeah, it'll, just so, be bo- it'll be Bone Crusher and Scavenger, yeah. The, yeah. The, since they have the two arms, generally, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think this is an interesting design. I think it's an interesting approach. It's one where I will definitely want because this is like well beyond what they did with the Voltron. Mm. Oh, that's like, good. Adding in this extra robot mode changes a lot, and like how poseable are these little robots? They cannot be very poseable. Yeah. Looking at this. Um, 
how it might just di- have like basic like shoulder articulation and then like yeah. knee and hip yeah i will maybe i want to see how the everything looks in color and how compromised those vehicles are because some mm. of them look fine some of them look like they're suffering a bit um the even the cubes i think i want to see how they look all like colored up because like again 52 toys beast box are fucking genius in making up like a, a very distinct robot cur- curl down into a pretty solid box yeah, so they started off really kind of basic and kind of mech, and now they're just doing like crazy shit with it. Yeah. We turn into a square, and it's like, wow, damn, son. Yeah, like, and I, I should say, like, their, I had their earliest figure, and it was still very solid as a figure. Mm. Like, really sensible transformation, but like, what they're doing these days is just like ludicrous. Um, so Have you wh- been attempted by any of them? Yeah, it's just they came out at the wrong time for me. Not the expensive or something? Uh, they weren't, but I just, you know, I didn't have the money. Like, oh, I, I mean the current ones. I don't mean the, the uh, old some of them ones. can be, some of them can't. Um, they, they've they've okay. definitely taken off. Um, they're wow. doing well for themselves. Uh, but uh, they're official anyway. too. Like you can get them on HLG, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they're um, they're not. They don't do license stuff, or they don't even try to do, give the impression of doing license stuff. They do have a couple of like suspicious construction ones that do look very green. <laughs> what are you and talking I think, about? I think they're a two part combiner as well. And I'm just like. Hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um. Andy, what's your thoughts on the Lucky Cat Riccio? They are interesting. Um. I. I. I will say that I think the vehicle modes are actually quite neat. They kind of give mm. me a bit of a, a Wolf Cybertron vibe or Fall of Cybertron vibe to them. Uh, like it's a nice redesign for like uh, Cybertronian construction vehicles. Uh, robot modes. I like to have better images of. Uh, just to get a better feel of how they they're looking, uh, the combined form again has it, it's very chunky in the boob area, let's say, uh, and generally mm. across the board looks quite chunky. So it'll be interesting to see uh, again real images of it and paint it up. But for a company that's doing something a bit different, I'll I'll give it to them. I mean, it is arguably taking somebody else's idea and just going, but what if Transformer? Uh, but it's it's not nothing else is like it on the market apart from. Obviously, the official version. Mm. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll give it to them. Yeah, interesting. Not something I'm gagging for, but interesting. Yeah, I'll, yeah, no, I'd agree with that. Uh, it yeah. falls very comfortably into that um, scenario. Um, yeah. We didn't talk. Uh, we didn't talk about it last week, but um, do you remember that little um, SD um, Constructicon set that came out a while ago? I don't remember the company. They did a Trypticon and they did an Overlord and they did Scorpion. Okay. Mm-hmm. Remember them? Vaguely. Maybe they're um, doing the G2 uh, Constructicons now. Ah, okay. Right. Um, and I I was going to share it, but there's really nothing too much to say about it beyond it's it's G2 colors. It's there. But, um, it's I rem- that was a company I wished I had like the money to get into because like SD really nicely transforming transformers, uh, Master Made. That's it. Ah, right. Um, okay. So just for anyone who didn't know, there's pre-orders up for the G2 Constructicons now. So. Buy one for me. <laughs> oh my god. Easy. Uh, oh okay, god. Andy, why don't you take us on to whatever comes next? Uh, next is Fans Hobby MB23 G1 Powermaster Dreadwing uh, slash Master Force uh, God Master uh, Buster, who I think is probably more likely to be. We did consider, uh, since we saw the final Headmaster being done, uh, at least the Headmaster Junior, who would they be moving on to next? I didn't even consider that they'd move on to uh buster and hydra but i was I, I was wrong here we go we got some prototype images of uh the boy <laughs> excuse me in vehicle mode and robot mode uh we also have like one small image of the power master uh it's not a desperately good one yeah uh, but we get an idea of what he be uh size comparison uh he is about the same size as uh, double deal i was double dealer we were talking about that's mm-hmm. who it was uh he's about the same size as double Clouder, dealer i suppose that's true. Uh, same as size as him and Jinrai when Jinrai is not combined. Mm. What do you think? Because I was kind of on board, but I, there's, I, I, mm, maybe I'll be more on board when he's painted, but there's just something about the overall there's sculpt that doesn't about quite go for me. The proportions that throw me off. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't help that for some reason, no one will photograph him from the front. Like, there's only one front-facing photo. Yeah, right? Weird. And he does not look good from the side. No, the, like, again, it's just something about the proportions on him, and they, yeah. I guess the way the back cable works. Let's have a look. Just, mm. 
let's have a look at the um show model because I haven't like looked at Buster or Hydra in more years than I can count. The um, jet mode looks nice though, at the very least. No, not Buster the dog. <laughs> and they're not doing a third party Buster dog. They should. Not yet. They should. Um. Okay, so Xbox one, dog. I am so looking. F- he will look very different in color than Dreadwing. Um, but I think yeah, they're. Uh, it's it's definitely going to be show accurate, but mm. the colors are so distinct on Buster that I think it's um it's going to be one of those. Yeah, I'm looking at the character model here, and it's it's very very reliant on the color breakup. Right. Because without it, it just makes it look like kind of one kind of overly chunky boy from some angles and overly skinny from others. And if I imagine that this character model here is in the same color scheme, it would look a lot worse than it does in these screenshots. So he could look a lot better, obviously, once he's all colored up. I think so, yeah. One thing I do notice is the shot where you have, uh, it's kind of like the back of the plane uh, with the Power Master kind of, inserted into him it looks like you can quite easily see his fists in the uh, back of where the arms are which just kind of hang under the wings yeah Uh, yeah i see that i hope there's something to cover up the hands i hope that's not exactly how it looks Uh, because that would be a shame if that's the case yeah it's a little distracting i don't mind the arms being there because that's what they are on the model Hmm. but having the hands be very visible and just like they're being scrunched up into the forearm Mm -hmm. uh feels like a like a a first party kind of measure rather than a third party, which you kind of want to be a little bit more clean if possible. Yeah. But overall, yeah. um, I- I'd like to see him colored, you know, because mm-hmm. I do I like... like I do like Buster and Hydra. Yeah, and they have a more interesting color scheme, in my opinion, than Dreadwind and Darkwing. I kind of, I don't know. I I like both of them. I and like to them be both. Fair, they, but I think they didn't stick are... with the color scheme during the show. They did no, kind of no, switch no. them. I, I all, like the thing for me is like I've always liked Dredwin's personality, but no one's ever done anything with him. Oh, you mean the the uh, the uh, the US version, the yeah, the Western so like interpretation. So I I like his color scheme, but I've got no like since no one's ever done anything with his personality. Like it's always kind of an idea. Like Buster and Hydra have a thing. They have a yes. psychosexual thing, but they have a thing. Um, like they are so creepy sometimes, but um. Also, I really like uh, the Buster color scheme. Mm. Um, I I think I when it comes to Hydra, I think Darkwing and him are both good in different ways. I don't think the red worked on Buster as well as the the uh, the, Te- the teal. Um, the what, yeah, sorry? it was teal. It was teal on um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the teal works a little bit better just because it meshes with the the other blues. The red's mm. a bit. It doesn't it because it's just used on the thighs and the arms. It stands out, but not in a good way. Like someone just mm. went ah, red arms, ah, red thighs, eh. Take just it out of nowhere. Yeah, take, take it. it. Pretty much. That's how it felt to me. Mm. Uh but uh, we'll, we'll keep you updated uh, at also, least. Oh, oh I, I, will, didn't, I didn't I'll, know. I'll this. say as well. The fans' hobby did a good scourge figure with the correct yes, color scheme. We'll they, get to they it. They did though. a really good one. Um, yeah. but uh, I didn't know this. Uh, that boat. Hydra and Buster had the Hydra Darkwing and and Buster Dreadwind releases, which are the American releases. Oh my god! Which is weird to me. I don't know why it's so weird, but it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. But anyway, uh, yeah, take us on, Mikey, to the next bit of news. Was this so hard? Yes, it's always was this hard, Mikey. So hard to do. All you had to do was do this. That's all you had to do. No. What did, what did they 14 have to do, years! What are you talking about? Um, so, New Age Toys have revealed a toy that's not Cyclonus. Um, so, um, so they've revealed H44, Legend Scale Grimlock. Specifically, a cartoon-accurate Grimlock. Now, what's the, what's the difference, Mikey? They're the same. So many fucking differences. The robot mode looks completely <laughs> different than every official Hasbro toy we've had for years. Um... Even the ones that was literally called Studio Series, i.e. for the fucking show. Um, so, um, it's not perfect. Some compromises. The dinosaur mode has compromises, but where they can make it look like the cartoon, they do. Mm-hmm. He's got the cartoon head. He's got the cartoon chest. He doesn't have a plastic, a see-through plastic neck. He's um, got the cartoon tail as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's, curvy. it's not 
yeah, it's not as long, but it, you know, again, transformation things. It's got the sure. cartoon pattern down his back. Everything's as cartoony as it can be. Uh, Robo mode has very cartoon proportions, very cartoon colorings, breakup details and everything else. The only thing that's missing really is the Autobot symbol. Um, yeah. Obviously, like, New Age have kind of made a name for themselves for, like, doing cartoon accurate, poseable uh, figures, which then they retool into complete lunacy. So I'm just sitting this like, Okay, I'm just I'm just gonna say it now. We're gonna get a um, a, what's his name, Goryu out of this. That's my prediction. Oh, that'd be interesting. I'd be I'd like, be down with that. We'll definitely get a shattered glass. But actually, am... you know, I don't think they will do that because if mm-hmm. they do that, it means they can't make a combiner team in the future. True, but who? All right, it's a weird retool because that is what they do. Who who are they gonna mm-hmm. weird retool this into? <laughs> I was gonna be stupid and say Snapdragon, but I don't think <laughs> they could do that. It but needs Andy, to be someone. Wrong. I, I think if you want a dumb retool, it needs to be someone like who you wouldn't suspect, who they wouldn't do a character for general. Oh, sorry, who they wouldn't do a new mold for. Like Death Charge, clearly they don't want to do yeah. their own special mold for Death Charge. So Beast giving Wars Grimlock, Grimlock. Beast Wars Grimlock. Do a really uh, heavy retool with a new head and if you other like change some bits of the dynamo. That could be um, interesting. We'll try and smooth him Death out. Kind Saurus. of round him off. Oh, no. No, he, he needs his own mold. Fuck you. He, he, I'm not disagreeing, but it could be done, actually. Not too bad. Hmm. Just change it, like, give him some wings that maybe you could remove for a shield or something like that. <laughs> could and could then... they make him into Dinobot Grimlock with a Y? Di- oh, God. Yeah, easily. Could they, they do they that? But, like, how would they do, like, how would they do the vehicle mode? That would be, like, what? Um, make him into, like, a weird tank. So you have the, the, uh, the dinosaur legs as tank treads. No, what they need to do, no retooling, but they give him that stupid tooth face. Oh. Everything else is the same. It's just like they've rearranged, <laughs> but it's like, it's like, it's a tank, is it? Yes. Close enough. Close enough. Uh, anyway, so this guy is really, really poseable. Um, they show him off. They show him next to their Devastator and in the, they're like, get kicked in the gut pose. Um, they show him next to a Tornatron? Where the fuck did that come from? Yeah, I don't know. What is that? Is that a 3D printed thing? Maybe. Um, and they show him next to an Optimus shaking his hand and saying, like, I'll betray you in 10 seconds. No. Um, so, uh, he does look like, also have him on a weird pose, which is him squatting, like I'm assuming he's supposed to be charging you. But it's just like, he's, it's like he's like getting ready to sumo wrestle. Which one's that? Like, uh, number nine. Or he's like down on his like down oh. on his haunches. I've never seen oh, that. Oh right, yeah. okay. But it does look he's gonna have some art- tail articulation. Uh, he comes with a G one style gun, uh, two open hands for his uh, robot mode. Bitch slapping. Uh, he comes with a hilt and a fire piece. The fire piece can then be put onto the hilt to make a big flame sword. And he comes with that fish from that one episode. Yeah. Um, he doesn't come with a, a head thing because that's ridiculous without having something to attach on he does have like despite the fact he's very um cartoony he does have in dyna mode anyway the ice swap gimmick yeah maybe Which... maybe uh the eyes did change color in the show uh no not once not once really not certainly not to red okay um but um they also demonstrate like a lot of posability in the dino arms i've never seen a grimlock with that kind of posability in the arms yeah usually they're like one or two pieces but it's like this uh there's two or three hinges there's a ball joint for the little hand part it's because yeah. usually they don't give his little hand anything do they usually no. the little hand part at most is like two claws they can't really do too much and that's it this yeah. is his own little hand um, but yeah, no, this looks really well put together. Like, the worst part about it is in robot mode, they don't have a panel to fold over to cover the legs. Okay, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Which I think is a criticism. Um, it really does kind of throw off the aesthetic. But apart from that, I think it's really well done. I think it's well put together. And hey, it's the toy Hasbro never made. And never believe anyone who tells you Studio Series 86 is this toy. It's not. It's objectively not. Well, my question is, Mikey, because this is effectively the first time you will have the option to get this figure. Will you get it? Because if it, I have the cash I, when the pre-order, when I have the cash, if I have the cash when the pre-order comes up, yes. Okay. That is my answer to that. Okay. Do you need me to tell you when it comes out or will you be mm. keeping your eye on it? I'll keep my eye on it. Okay. All right. I'll be interested to see what you think if you, if you do get it, because uh, neither of us has ob- obviously had a new age figure, so... Mm-hmm. We need to see. I like it. Yeah. Uh, like there's it. another new age Love figure it. though, Mikey. For you to talk about. You disappeared there for me for a second. 
Oh, well, there's another there's another New Age figure for you to talk about. Oh, uh, yes. So we've also got, hey, they they can't stop. Uh, H2D Monero. Canyon Nero uh, oh. is the Gold Lagoon Jazz, which is, of course, jazz in gold. They've done a few of these. Um, yeah, yeah. The Golden Lagoon just feels like the cheap repaint this, like, ah, do it in gold? Yeah, do it in gold. Nah. It doesn't look terrible. It doesn't look jazz, good. But it's jazz, but gold, you know? Yeah, but weirdly enough, they've kept his details, like his fo- his racing stripes and his four and everything else. Yeah, um... Yeah, I guess it adds a little bit of something to Jazz to have those, but it is odd that they're there. Yeah. Because it's like extra paint up that they probably could have saved money on not including. Because it would mm. be, like in that episode, that shit was covered up anyway, so yep. why add it? Um. So yeah, uh, he's he's okay. Uh, yeah, it's fine. I'd say that he's, you know. Um, but he's not amazing, but he's okay. Mm. So that's my opinion on him. What about you? He's gold. He's 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 gold. Yeah. All the awesome powers references today. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't I, going for that, but he's gold. I love so. gold. <laughs> uh, shall I take us on, Mikey? Ah, uh, please do. All right. Uh, unfortunately, we're going to be talking about legacy figures today. But you were really excited for this toy. I w- well, really excited is one thing. Uh, maybe maybe I was, but no. Yeah. Uh, so. I told you, I said that we would get a Scourge repaint of the Laser Optimus Prime figure. I yes. was wrong. I was wrong. Are you sure? We are not. Yes, I'm 100% sure we are not getting a R.I.D. Scourge figure. We are getting a Transformers Legacy uh, Leader Class Black Convoy figure. Now, it says that's for some that, reason in brackets but, it says but, R.I.D. Scourge, but no, that's but not you true. See, and Andy, in Japan, yes. Uh, where Transformers is born and raised and everything that matters comes from Japan. Um, the character uh, we called Scourge was originally called Black Convoy. You see, I feel yes. like you're making a, a, an error here uh, in your judgment. That is true, but this is not Black Convoy from the show R.I.D. or Car Robots either. Uh, this, I, I, this is, I'm this is... sorry, it says so in the title. Black this Convoy, is... R.I.D. Scourge. This is Black Convoy... The uh the exclusive that Japan likes to re-release a lot, uh, a lot. You can tell this because he's primarily black. He has a little bit of teal. He does not have much gray on him. I think the most the reason I don't like this uh the most is because his shoulder parts, where the missiles are, which are apparently even on the Laser Optimus Prime translucent, apparently. So mm-hmm. I was told and painted over as gray. Uh, are done in a red translucent plastic, but not painted over in black or anything, so they really stand out more aggressively. A, more a pink. Pink, red, um, from whatever. What, from what I understand, that pink is there actually so the headlights uh, have some color? That's stupid. Hmm. Um, you know why it's stupid? I can think of many reasons. I am also sending you a, a couple of years ago now, a Titan Return, a small line, you may have heard of it. Mm-hmm. Um, somewhat overpriced these days, but um, did their own version of a character similar to Black Convoy, oh. similar to Black Convoy, named um, <laughs> uh, uh, Scourge. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just sending you uh, their version, and I wanted to see what you thought of the uh, comparison there. Yeah, I, I actually saw you posted it up on Twitter, and I was like, yeah, that's actually Scourge. It's actually uh, the correct Scourge colors. Yeah, this is Nemesis Prime. Let's let's stop stop pulling bullshit. So it's advertised as sure. Black Convoy on Flex, which is yep. okay. But um, it's it's a Nemesis Prime with some new pink highlights using the Laser Optimus mold. But then they throw in the upside down G two Autobot symbol and say it's it's Scourge. It's not the colors are all wrong for Scourge. All wrong. Like, I saw Scourge. a Digibash Bash earlier in the week mm. that had him in the correct colors and it looked like Scourge and it looked really yeah. nice. Um, for anyone who's saying, what the hell are you talking about, Willis? Um, now the sword's the right color. I'll yes. give you that. Uh, Scourge is in robot mode, primarily gray. Gray yes. with teal and some dark highlights here and there. Yeah, black, black mm. highlights in places. Yeah. Uh, Nemesis Prime is primarily black with teal. Now yes. he is a deri- he's derived from the Scourge paint scheme, but it's actually more like the Scourge paint scheme meets the Nemesis Armada Prime, uh, not Armada Nemesis. Uh, paint scheme. In this case, with like violent violet thrown in, um, and it's just not very attractive on this mold. In fact, for me, it kind of highlights a lot of physical flaws. Like the way the shoulders work in this toy makes 
makes his arms look like out of proportion when it's in the it's in this kind of like solid black color um mm. that I didn't notice before um and... That's the main reason it doesn't look good because that translucent plastic has not been painted over. Yeah, it's a aggr- it's aggressive, uh, and like yeah. you said, it's there for one tiny detail which you next to never see. And it being translucent plastic, you if you're using translucent plastic for light piping, headlights are not gonna do shit because your your figure where the the translucent plastic's most exposed is on the ground. Mm. No light is able to get to it to show it off. Just do that as a paint app. And it's a select figure. You 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 have the freedom to do that. Yeah, well, um, I don't think so. But I was thinking about, apart from the fact I was kind of like, it's one of those things where I looked at first and said like, why are people like not liking this? And then I went in, oh, now I see. Yeah. Um, but when I look at this, I see marketing. I see someone in marketing who saw a, Okay, like, okay, so what are we going to repaint this later Optimus into? Uh, the most obvious repaint, sir, or madam, is uh, Scourge from R.I.D. Uh, okay, Black Convoy uh, in Japan. Which is, cool. Uh, how do we how do we do that? Well, he's primarily grey. He's like evil Optimus Prime. Okay, stop there. So Nemesis Prime. N- n- not really. The colors are quite distinct. He's like got like a black head with a, maybe, depending on like if it's toy or not, there's like teal on the on the head, but it's like kind of black with some with a lot of grey so Nemesis Prime uh, see we, we we have a Nemesis Prime colour scheme that exists and we will be doing that and we will be using that instead and thank you for your contribution so I feel like someone in America because I'm looking at all the Scourge toys we've had from yeah. RID 2001 uh, 2002 Destructicon Scourge from 2003 Timeline Scourge Legend Scourge Legends Titan class, uh, Titan's Return Scourge, all have had the right color schemes. This is the first one to go with this very classic Nemesis Prime color scheme. And I you think this will, this will probably be like, ne- like if you scan it and you look at the bio, it'll be Nemesis Prime. It won't be Scourge. Because this is, again, Generation 1 being given priority over everything else. Because you know generation... what would be the worst Ugh. thing to do, Mikey? The worst, worst thing, thing to do, to do would be is if the, another version came out and it was actually coloured as Scourge. Uh, that would really annoy me. Uh, unless, yes. like, I'll give it to Japan if they do it, but apart from that, I would be annoyed. Um, <laughs> but like, I'm looking through ne- like the Nemesis Prime page. Colour layer. Having pink on the chest. Nemesis Prime feature. Having uh black all over the chest nemesis prime feature the layout of the teal nemesis prime feature etc like this is a nemesis prime figure that they've put the scourge autobot symbol on and it's pretty annoying considering how much like people who say like oh i really like the color scheme fine but again it's like generation one is being given priority over something else and, and like like knockout and like RC and like bulkhead for me, it's like cool. I love fresh takes and everyone, but if we're going to have this like cartoon accuracy show accuracy thing, can we at least have it for everyone? Mm. And if you can't do them, don't. And this this is just corporate to me. This is someone in corporate said uh, or design said like right, you just use the existing Nemesis Prime co- color layout. Don't use Scourge. And. I don't, I don't like that. Um, so uh, that that's my take on it. Um, I think from certain angles it looks okay. Honestly, I think the 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 paint can look fine in some shots, but you you undermined yet again the whole multiversal aspect of Legacy because it's not multiversal. It's G one. It it and... feels like uh yeah it's 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 annoying to me. I get really annoyed when I see this because mm. it feels like such an easy thing to do, and they just went no, no. And for some people, they won't care. And they'll be, they'll be fine with oh, it. Oh god, for yeah. Me, I get I, for me, I get annoyed by it. I really do. Uh, uh well, like my exhaustion with G one, like, and I don't want to be exhausted with G one. By the way, people no. say, like say like, oh, are you being a curmudgeon, the old bastard? I mean. I don't want to be. It's coming across that way, I'm sure, but I don't want to be. And I actually um, like G1, I think, more than you, because you're, you're not a big fan of the, the original cartoon series, because you came really. too much later. I like the original cartoon series, because I kind of mm. grew up with it, so... Yeah. Like, I, I didn't really get into... Trend- no, I didn't get tra- into Transformers until my 20s. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so... 
But well, hey. something that isn't G1. No, uh, we also got to see no, uh, the Legacy um, Nitro Convoy. Uh, uh, and uh, you forgot, you forgot the English name. Did you yeah, I was trying. I, I I couldn't remember what it is because I just don't I just don't care about uh, him. I, let's be honest. I, I like don't Nitro remember. Convoy. He's a really good character. I don't remember. Character. I don't remember I the know. character really well. If I'm honest, an Nitro show. Stoic, I think. Uh, I I remember for some reason in the West we decided to change Override. Uh, oh, sorry, we changed Nitro Convoy into a girl for some reason. And I, d- I still don't know why. It seemed like one of those really arbitrary things where, like, do you remember when Japan brought uh, or got Beast Wars and they changed Air Razor to a dude? Oh, yeah. I for no, for no that. For no particular reason. It felt like that, but just for some reason the, uh, the West went, okay, she's a girl. It's like, oh, uh, uh, okay. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense, but it makes some of the relationships a little bit strange or different, I suppose. But uh, yeah, what can you do? Giant robots having relationships with humans. Uh, I guess uh, it's a it's a hey, thing that happens in the same series. In presi- no, actually, I was going to say in the same series, but it wasn't the same series because it wasn't a it wasn't a continuation. Screen, it right? was an utter it was an utter nonsense attempt at continuity. And yes, I was yeah. going for a Mount of Yeah, but, and that was in both shows. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And again, I'm not quite sure why a giant robot who's probably a good few million years old would have any kind of relationship with a small 40 yeah. year old girl or something i don't know like remember that one story in marvel where skids is getting I washed know. down i'll, I'll and tell that, you this that you know. one story um where lady J marries Braun and they have a kid no because you know why i don't know that because i didn't read the marvel comics because i didn't that like wasn't them. marvel andy that was about four years ago was it that was four years ago i don't remember that four or five years ago lady J and Braun got married and had a child what series G.I. Joe versus Transformers. Oh, yeah, I didn't read that shit either. Get the, <laughs> Get the fuck out of here, Mikey. God damn. Get out of here, boy. Get out of here. Uh, what do you think of Nitro Convoy then, Mikey? Because um, it's definitely not G1. It's definitely not G1. Um, I like the robot mode a lot. Um, yep. I've always liked that design. Um, so it, I think it's turned out quite well in robot mode. Um, I did see a tweet that amused mm-hmm. me this week that said, uh, why, why are people happy to get this figure? It looks exactly the same as the last figure. And I, oh my I fucking to myself, god. No, no, it doesn't. This looks a lot better than that no, original uh, figure. The, and as that person combust from like sheer irony. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this, the proportions on this are a lot better. A lot, lot yeah, better. Yeah, no, I was just looking at it and just like, no, it's like chalk and it's it's listen if you're gonna go down this obsessive show accuracy route cool this just mm-hmm. sort of goes with that um slightly ironic for cybertron because that was using cad models although it did adjust them for some characters um so i think it looks good i'm terrified of the effects parts that will melt the toy and eat it alive um that's still a thing that happens i don't know because this i think this is the first one in a while to get them um mm. but so robot mode i'm pretty happy with uh we don't get to see your gun or his gun, or their gun, I suppose, their gun. Um, yeah. Oh, we do, we do, we do, we do, we do in one yeah, shot, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Uh, doesn't look like it's got a cyber key gimmick, but it does have, like, the same functionality of, like, flip out guns. Um, yeah. So, happy with the robot mode. Vehicle mode, I think they could have put a little bit more into it. Like what? It looks pretty accurate to the animation model. Maybe a few extra panels here and there, just because it does kind of look like the back end like you've got half a sports car and then the back end disappears isn't that what the animation model was though i don't remember all i remember that a- that animation model is the opening of ignition andy yeah to, i think to be fair mikey the mm. the vehicle mode always looked really janky because uh, mm. it wasn't I'm gonna have like it, it yeah like generally the 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 vehicle mode was pretty weird uh, so mm. i think it i i don't i don't mind it uh really too much uh because i just kind of accept you know nitro convoy had this weird vehicle mode uh the vehicle mode like say it looks quite nice it's really tidy Mm. generally speaking in the back uh might might have been nice to tidy up the back of the legs but i'm not too fussed by that no i'm I'm fairly happy with the vehicle mode i'm looking at some a few i think the original toy had a bit of a better vehicle mode to be honest oh my god Um, well why don't you buy that and kiss it. Yeah, a bit chunkier. It had a better flow. The cockpit wasn't as far forward relative. This like this toy looks longer. Yes, yeah, it, yeah. I would say I would agree with that. And the yes. white part, ah, the white parts aren't as big at the back. That's what it is. 
Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, but oh, like overall, I think it looks good. Um, it's not I a character I love or anything. But... I, I would always sacrifice vehicle mode for robot. Oh mode, yeah, and that's you know, definitely what this is. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, no, I think it looks decent. Um, there is a GTS repaint, which is kind of like no black. Black and red, if I remember right. So there's always that option for redoing. I'm trying to remember, like, is there anyone, like, override... Well, there's a black Nitro Convoy. Yeah, is there? Yep. It was oh. called Dark Nitro Convoy. Let's have a look-see. Dark Nitro it... Convoy. It was also loosely based for the designs of Shatterglass Andromeda and Wings Universe Andromeda. Who the fuck is Andromeda? I have no idea. So there's Shatterglass Elite 1 used the, the grey version. So that could be a thing. Andromeda, Galaxy Force, Dark Nitro Convoy is just like Shatterglass Scourge. Rodimus colors. It's just Scourge colors. It's black with gray it's, and I'd, teal. I'd say it leads more to Rodimus because it's like neon. <laughs> it can be seen through space. Um, neon. Like I'm looking at a picture of it. The thing is like the, the teal parts are like metallic paint. So it's like glowing. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't say glows. Uh, you it's know. glowing. I'm, Got yeah. a healthy glow. I think that's just the, the light reflecting off the flash healthy in the back, glow. the very white background. Healthy glow. Uh, Andromeda is. I uh, have no idea who that is. And Andromeda is. I have no idea who that is. So All right. none of. I have gained no information from this. But anyway, I think it looks like a good toy. Yeah. Uh, just kind of annoying that Prime didn't get this treatment. It's just. Oh well. You know. No, it's fine. Everything was like. Be you know. Am I gonna get off this train? No. Never. Because I think it's really annoying. Because they did Scourge, and they did Scourge wrong, and there, there are few crimes to commit worse than doing a Scourge wrong. Well, no, there are. You do Bulkhead wrong, you do RC wrong. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the thing, like, Andy, you they've committed all wrong. the worst crimes. <laughs> they've committed all the worst crimes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> just wait for the Transformers Prime version of Soundwave just to be G1 Soundwave. Oh, <laughs> With God. a different head. They, it is, Andy! It is! No, oh my God! That's what they're doing. They're just doing the siege sound wave when we we're all expecting the prime sound wave. <laughs> uh, and they can't mind. even do the one they want because Walmart. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. Uh, Mikey, I guess yes. the last uh, stories are for you because uh, although we do like Nitro Convoy, uh, I don't care too much about Nitro Convoy. Yeah, and I like, think like I, I, let, I wouldn't. I'll mind. give you. I'll mm. give you three. Galaxy Force characters I'd pref- much prefer. Noise Maze. Wasn't in the show, but Unicron. Because the mm. toy for that was very cool. Uh, and who would be a good last one? Uh, ha, ha, ha. Signal Lance. There we go. So, oh my this god. This is the perfect time to do Signal Lance once and for all. Okay, so my one. Noise Maze I think is a good one because I love... Uh, Soundwave. I love that Soundwave design. Yes. I love that sound. He had a cool laser um, beak as well. He did, right. but like I, I love that design, and I always tried to love that toy. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. The laser beak toy was good. The, yeah, the sound um, wave. It was the, was it was the not... legs and the arms. I think. That yeah, really his super up. skinny legs. Jesus. Yeah. Um. Uh, what was his name in Japan? Something. What convoy. do he look like? It's a it's Flame courage convoy? anyway. Flame, Flame convoy. convoy. Flame yeah. convoy. There you go. There's a fun one. That would and... be really nice to get a really poseable, decent version yeah. of him. Yeah, especially good. especially like with proper, like instead of having the gorilla arm elbows oh. or having a really poseable I... dragon mode would be really uh, yeah, nice. Yeah, I, I was going to say like having each of the uh, three heads poseable would be mm-hmm. pretty nice. And Signal Lancer. Yeah, everyone wants Signal Lancer because it's stupid. Kind of amazing. It's dumb. Oh, it's great. Uh, because, also because I've seen a lot of talk about it this week, Thunder Blast. Show accurate Thunder Blast. And I mean show accurate Thunder Blast. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, What's the name all, of Japan? Uh, Chromia. Chromia, yeah. Uh, but I, when I say show accurate, I mean all the details. <laughs> My, that Mikey were there. wants the big boob. We want the sculpted in nipples. Yes. Which yes, we saw in several shots because why did you put these into a children's show? <laughs> why? Because <laughs> Japan didn't fucking care. They're like, whatever. <laughs> I always like the TF Wiki captions for that. Let the animators go home to their wives for the love of God. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so anyway, uh, conventions are coming up as always. Uh, closer than I realized um actually for a few of them so tfcon is coming up tfcon Toronto specifically coming up in july 8 to 10 2022 and they have announced several more guests in this case greg bugar 
Bugar. Bugar, uh, who played everyone from Grimlock to Outback to Skyfire to the Long Haul to many, many people to Eeyore to so many things over the years. Uh, sure. And David Kay, uh, who voiced someone in the movie recently? Yeah, he voiced uh, Megatron in Jobby the Hong's video. Yes, of a yes. Masterpiece toy. Yes, uh, where he gave you strong and emotional COVID advice. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but someone was. Ta- oh, he was in Eternals. That was it. Oh, no, was he? He was the villain in Eternals, or a villain in Eternals. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I haven't seen it, and I... When when even people are like, the MCU are saying, like, wow, this didn't go well, I'm just like... Yeah. Uh, But yeah, so David Kay, in case you haven't known, uh, played Megatron in Beast Wars and Armada Trilogy, and of course played the best animated Optimus Prime we've ever had in Transformers Animated, and... Yeah, no, he's just the best one. And everyone comes like, Peter Cullen's the only Optimus Prime... Suck my dick. Um, oh, no. Yeah. So, he's going to be there as well. He's actually being announced for TFCon Chicago in, in October. Um, so, keep your eye out for them. And over on this side of the pond, TF Nation have announced that Jack Lawrence will be making an appearance. Jack, of course, is most well known um, for covers and stuff on Sins of the Wreckers. He also worked on Lost Light. Uh, most recently he worked on Treads and Circuits and he's doing uh, I think he's the solo artist for War's End but don't quote me on that um, so cool uh, Jack's, Jack I Jack is one of those artists I feel has really come on leaps and bounds since um, the last light days okay uh, I think he's his style has greatly improved and has evened out I would always say it's still not a style that's for me but like his ability because like when he first started doing Lost Light I didn't think he was actually doing a fantastic job as his style Hmm. and then as he developed on more uh, he started getting proportions better he started like figuring out how to do angles and make fighting scenes better and I think by the end of Lost Light he was doing a good job um, a really good job and it's nice that's one thing I'll say about Treads and Circuits it's an incredibly boring book but (laughs) it is very well done it is very boring but it's very well done. Um, it's very well done, but my God. I'd oh, it's not good. Dry. No, I've never said it, seen anyone who said like, wow, what a great comic. But the art is solid. Uh, okay, that's what you mean. His, his style has really come into his own. And I think it's important um, to remember that, hey, artists are people too. And we're all learning the craft of whatever craft we're in. Um, so that's the convention news. Wow. wow. All right. That's all of our news for the week then, Mr. Mikey. We're going to move over to uh, what you done this week. What you done for fun, son? Mm, very, 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 very little. I've had a very, 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 very busy week. And basically, whenever I've come home, I've basically just gone onto YouTube and go like, I do not want to engage. Uh, I was going to do some catch up for stuff today, but I was away for most of the day. Um, the only I've done two things of note. Uh, one of them is just basically setting myself up for the rest of the year for some things. Um, so I did watch uh, Kamen Rider today. I did watch Kamen Rider Revice, which is following on from the last episode where everything went to shit. And basically now people are kind of being divided into people who are getting themselves stamped to have their demons removed and basically make themselves weaker so like we can ultimately all worship giant alien space demon Satan. Um, and then people who aren't. And this one's mostly about uh, some of the existing characters sort of coming to terms with their own feelings of helplessness and guilt. Um, one character that's mostly played up as a laugh, one is played straight. Um, vale has quite a lot to do in this one. Um, there's, I, I get tired of saying the show has extremely well done fight scenes. Andy, the show has ex- extremely well done fight scenes. Um, like the, you really can't fault the uh, the direction, the the combat direction of the show. Like it is just very, very good. Um, there's a hint of what probably coming with um the final form. Um, there's also a hint of a mass produced writer. Uh, which is kind of interesting. Um, and the secondary plot is continuing on from the stuff with Daiji last time, which was basically since he's gotten rid of Kagro. Basically, he's out of balance. He's no longer got the balance between dark and light. He's basically just like all all justice all the time, which means he's a bit of a zealot. And it's what kind of so. Are we on now? Uh, this is thirty six. Okay. okay. So probably depending on how far they go, between nine and fourteen left. Hmm. Um. But yeah, uh, Daiji. I think they are slowly pushing in a Mitsuzane direction, or at least a Mitsuzane esque direction. Um. They're just like, oh, we're going to make him do that thing, are we? Um, 
So I'm, I'm curious to see how it goes because he's got the shit kicked out of him in the last couple of episodes. <laughs> like, really violently, graphically. Like, some of the most, like, pretty heavy on-screen violence for, like, the TV airing of the Kamen Rider show. Hmm, okay. Um... So I'm curious to see where we go. Uh, like I said, hints for right. I, I enjoyed it. Like, um, at times it wasn't that heavy, but it was fun. Um, and again, like, just great fight scenes. Uh, new rider as well introduced, whose design looks a lot better in motion than it does in uh, pictures, but is still quite weird. Hmm. Um. So, uh, yeah. Apart from that, I didn't watch anything. Didn't do anything of note. Um. I meant to watch, I meant to go see um, that movie I've been talking about, Everything Everywhere, um, but... I, I hear it's good. Chance. I hear it's very good. I didn't get the chance. Hopefully I will, maybe tomorrow or the day after, we'll see. Um, but uh, I did basically set up some pre-orders for the rest of the year. So I didn't pay for any of these yet, but they'll be com- like coming in in drips and drabs over the next few months. So I... Finally, have the high grade one one forty fourth scale crossbone Gundam Ghost uh, Phantom Gundam pre ordered. So that is the green, basically green screaming devil robot. Oh so my I'm, god! Uh, uh, that's on fire. Like I'm just like I love crossbone. I love crossbone so much. <laughs> just like well, we need grounded realism. This is a robot that's screaming and on fire, mm. and it's a good guy. Yay! Oh, who's its enemy? It's a robot with a fedora. Oh no. <laughs> I love Crossbone so much. Um, so it's I've got to a good anime. Oh, oh, no, no. We need to make an OVA about a single episode that got cut for reasons that are never known. Oh, yeah. I don't know why they're doing that movie. It no one weird. does. No one does. I've looked up. Like, even people who know well enough about it are confused. Hmm. Like, it's very strange. Um, so, um, that's that's in. I also got some pre-orders in. Like, I think I said last week, a couple of weeks ago, I got a pre-order in for the Figure Eyes uh, Tajador. So, these are all, like, I'm paying five euros at a pop. So, and, they're, and they're quite well separated, so I'm not too worried about money at the moment. Um, and then I also got pre-orders in for things. These are going to come in in the next two months or so. I meant to only do this for one figure, but I basically just because I felt like treating myself, ended up ordering the first wave of the ha- Jurassic World, Jurassic Park Hammond collection. No, no, Mikey. <laughs> yeah, so that is... They're not really expensive. They're quite cheap for what they are. But these are... For anyone who doesn't know, the Hammond collection is the new collector line for Jurassic. Um, it's um, highly posable. Or, like, they're supposed to be highly posable dinosaurs and sort of, like... Re like better versions of the tree and three quarter inch scale figures, but more with a bit more articulation and more accessories and stuff like that. Mm, okay. Um, they just they've just announced Grant, and he comes with like uh two heads, uh, the the flare, the raptor claw hand, and the baby raptor, and a glove gloved hand for holding the baby raptor. From that like you bred raptor scene, just like where it's where in the book it's like a lot more weird and aggressive as he's like holding the thing to his face and like really stressing the poor thing out. Oh, I thought you meant um, like he starts kissing it. No, it gets eaten at the end. <laughs> I'm your mother. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> I'm your mother in Japan. Oh, oh no. Um, but yeah, so I ha- so the pre-orders I have in are the Parasaurolophus, um, which is based off the Lost World design, because that one is in every single Jurassic movie and has a different design in every movie. Oh, really? Okay. Yep. Uh, Dominion's got the most dr- dramatic, because Dominion tried to make it like like a hybrid between the real animal and the Jurassic Park animal. Hmm. So um, it's still it's got some design features from Jurassic, but it's mostly moving towards uh, the real thing. Um, the Baryonyx, which is a these are two medium scale figures, so they're kind of representing animals that would be between like ten, fourteen, fifteen feet tall. Um, I think the Baryonyx is like twelve feet. Um, so that is if you saw Fallen Kingdom, it's the one that is trying to murder people through lava. Um, long, big, long snout, kind of like a Spinosaurus without the sail. Um, so that it seems to be the most articulated dinosaur they've they've um released so far. Um, then there's the Ian Malcolm, which is mm. movie one Malcolm. Um, I've having seen some design shots. I'd quite like a retool of this into the Dominion one. Um, with the gray hair. Um, and the Velociraptor, which is technically it's blues. Blue's design, because it's got Blue's features, but painted in Jurassic Park colors, which one means they're definitely repainting this, uh, and two means you're never going to get the perfect toy. <laughs> How does so that make I, you feel? 
I, Since I you're do. The, you're the Dino Boy here. I really wish, like, I really wish they just—it's a simple retool. Just retool the head a bit. That's all you have to do. Mm, no, like, it just seems lazy to me. Like, it's something Mattel has been doing for a while, but this is a collector line, but a little bit of extra effort in. Is this um, something that you want? I mean, I would like to, if I had the Jurassic Park Raptor, not to be really distracted by the bumps and things that are on the back of Blue's head, which so, I find so, really So it is, it is something you'd want, so that's why you're yeah. not allowed it. Yeah, yeah. You know true. how this works. Um, so the, they've announced the next wave of figures, which is Alan. Um, Ellie's been announced, but she's not been seen yet. Um, Alan, uh, Triceratops, which, which weirdly enough doesn't have an opening mouth, and it's the first figure of the line to not have one. All right. Okay. Um, the Tyrannosaurus, so Rexy, um, from Jurassic Park. Um, the Gallimimus, and, and the Dilophosaurus. And the Ceratosaurus from Jurassic Park 3 in Camp Cretaceous. Right. Which, which is from the scene where they're, they, they're digging through a pile of poop for a phone, and there's a comedy <laughs> thing of a... They spent however many untold thousands of dollars on making a full dinosaur rig model for a gag. Oh yeah, I remember that. It's That's... it's it's where it's just looking at them right next to the boat, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then it leaves. Yeah. Yeah. It it's in Camp Cretaceous a lot more and they do a lot more with it, but it's still like the fuck. It's also I like I hate that scene for so many reasons, but mostly cuz like so they know that the the phone is in the Spinosaurus. Mhm. And then they hear the phone and the first thing they do upon hearing the phone is to rush towards it to try and find the phone. Yeah, cuz if you know where the dino- where the phone is, you know where the dinosaur is. But they but but the dinosaur wants to murder them. Yeah, but if you know where the dinosaur is, you can hide from the dinosaur. It's 16 feet tall. It's not hard to find. You say that, but how easy was it to find it? <laughs> but like I remember just like we need the phone, run to the phone and no one goes like we need the phone. Last time we saw it it was in something. Oh. Wait, didn't Yeah, they actually do need the phone as well, don't they? They need yeah. to get off the island. So yeah, and that's then... why they're going for the phone. But the, the Do you know what what I would do if the last time I saw a phone it was inside a monster that wanted to rip me in part? I would maybe not rush to the phone. I might walk to the phone carefully. No, you got you got to get to it quick. It's your only chance to get off the island, Mikey. And then the bloody military shows up somehow. What do you mean somehow? They had hovercrafts. I know. Ellie, Ellie called them somehow. Ellie's husband is connected to the government, but I feel like say like <laughs> can you, can hi. You the my wife said her mate is at, on an island, and they're being eaten. She may have also had sex with her mate, but we won't talk about We don't that. talk about that. We don't talk about but that. But would you mind sending a military presence unto a sovereign nation, please? Well, there's, uh, there's dinosaurs there, so f- we're America, fuck yeah. You know the song, <laughs> America, fuck yeah. Uh, and then that's bloody star... Like, I, I, I rewatched it because I'm doing the rewatch, and I hated every second of it, but I, that was <laughs> that, the week before last. But, like, two things really struck me about the opening. Mm-hmm. What kind of irresponsible lunatic would let their boyfriend take their son on a fully oh, illegal so boat tour? That's cool, though. He's the cool. He's the cool. Like uh, he's dad, a criminal. Dad. No, no, he's cool. Like uh, the kid be like, oh, cool, dad. And the the girl's like, oh, he's so dangerous. He doesn't care. I'd like, the hi, I took your son on a drug run. Yeah, exactly. We had a great time. Kind of into, and second, to the family business, Mikey. After years, after 20 years of that film being out, right? Hmm. I was watching the scene on the boat, which makes no damn sense be- for me for years. Which which one on the boat? So they're on the boat and they start to film and then they go through a cloud oh. and no one's on the boat. Oh, that one. Yeah, I don't know how that works. I I was watching it. I think I was, I was watching it in HD for the first time because it's right. Jurassic Park 3 and I refused to try and get a HD copy of it. But I just had said, fuck it. I got a high HD one this time. <laughs> and very faintly in the fog... Mm. You see kind of an oval shape. What, in the water? In the water. I think... So how does it work? It's supposed to be the Spinosaurus's spine. But how does it, like... Does it just poke its head up, pinch the dude off the boat, and then go back down into the water? And then go back to the island? Presumably. Why? Why would it do that? It's all I can think... Because, like, as far as I can tell, it's the only thing... Because, like, considering, like, something... the, The boat didn't hit anything... That's the thing, yeah. So the only thing I can imagine is that the boat like passed by the spino and it just was a dick, which well, is well, kind no, of its whole thing. Did, did the the spinosaurus like do a doggy paddle to like wade in the water close to the boat? Because 
Like the they boats were, going quite at out speed. Of well, like here's the thing: if it was a real Spinosaurus, I could say like, well, like it's an aquatic animal, but that's the Jurassic sure, Park Spinosaurus, not, which ain't an aquatic animal. Well, it's it's that not one just thing. that; it's like it's the ability to go the same speed as the boat, but also yeah. like no, put no, it was your waiting. head up and bite. It was the waiting. guy, but without without causing the boat to shake or bump or anything like that. It, it was a trap, Andy. It, it it set a trap. It's the, the way it did. It was a perfect ploy. The, the 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 trap was that it made you watch this 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 bloody film, and a lot of Jurassic community are going like, "Oh, we want him back, and we want the, the Jurassic Park three Raptors <laughs> back." And I was just like, "Sure, well, yeah, you know what? I like the Jurassic Park three Raptors design. Perfectly fine." I mean, like... I mean, let's again. Let's be honest. There's only one good Jurassic Park movie, and the rest of I, all, I all of them disagree. are pretty bad. I disagree. I, I pretty would. strongly, but I haven't no. hit the one I like yet. Um, Which is the one you like? I really like Jurassic World. No, that's I garbage re- shovelware. No, it's not. I genuinely yeah, think no, it it's is. a great, fun adventure no. film for that. I think it's. I think it's legitimately good. No, <laughs> I, I think my opinion disagree. is more valid than yours. I think you're a big fan in... of Jurassic Park. No, no, that... no, no, Andy. I think Lost World has aged terribly. I think Jurassic Park is a piece of crap, and I think Fallen Kingdom was made by the wrong man. So you can't pull that card on me. I can because you've said before how much of a, d- a fan of Jurassic Park you I are am, generally but speaking. I am also clearly able to judge a bad film for being a bad film. I, I think also I hate the entire that. MCU. Even the was, even, I, I'm even starting to retroactively hate the stuff I liked. <laughs> so. I'm afraid you're. You also don't like Godzilla vs Kong or Godzilla King of the Monsters. No, because they're just kind of mediocre. They're just like oh, you're just fine. a bad person. I think I think you have your, your biases. I think that's fair to say. I think that you. I think everyone has their biases, but I think that you are also a bad person. I, I like that your response is, "Oh yeah, people do have the biases, but you're wrong." It's like, wow. Yeah, are we no, yeah. You can have biases, but be right. <laughs> if your bias is don't walk into the road because the car will hit you, that's a bias. I, I I would disagree with you. I I don't think <laughs> Jurassic World is very good. I think you're scum and are unloved by uh, God. Well, clearly, but that has nothing to do with my opinion <laughs> of the movie. <laughs> I've actually got um three playing right now because I want to see if that scene is like I've ha- I I just noticed it. I'm just gonna let it hit that moment with the the fog, and I'm going to see if it comes in. But that's oh, all I've right. done. That's all I've done. That's um yeah. and if if it is a spinosaurus i will let you know and i will also judge you for being a bad person but yeah, yeah, yeah. andy what did you get up to nothing uh nothing's <laughs> really interesting to it's just been a pretty empty week i've just been watching more voyager uh there are definitely a lot of episodes i'm skipping because i go oh it's this one no what's these oh we do it we're doing the the irish village in the holodeck <laughs> let's oh! skip that one there are two episodes in the irish village there's they fair haven and spirit folk yeah wow fuck me you remember them oh yeah <laughs> and both of them revolve around uh the captain basically having sex with an attractive irish hologram effectively yeah but then they're trying to justify it by saying he's a real boy I like the fact that uh, the guy with the mustache, the old guy with the mustache who I've seen in lots of things, is the stereotypical uh, American. Toy, toy, toy. I... Yeah, it's literally that. It's it's. Have you heard the voice of the leprechaun from The Simpsons? He's doing that voice. He's just actually uh, like he's saying full words. Yeah, it's, there's a, there's, it's really aggressively bad. There's a wonderful moment, like in the aggressively bad thing, where he runs up to the doctor, says, uh, "Who's the doctor? Who's pretending to be a priest?" Yes. And he says, like, Father, help me. I've, I've broken the fifth commandment again. And the doctor goes, I remember this distinctly. The doctor goes, like, uh, say five our fathers and call me in the morning. Say ten our fathers and call me in the morning. The, which basically means, like, I've broken the fifth commandment. And the doctor's like, you just fuck off. I don't care. The fifth commandment is thou shalt not kill. <laughs> so this, this Irish man has run up screaming, Doctor, help me. I have killed again. <laughs> Oh, you know, <laughs> Our father fine. helped me. I've killed again, and the priest's response is, "I don't want to deal with your shit." <laughs> I hail Marys. You'll be fine. It's fine. Like I said, I I couldn't I couldn't watch that, so I skipped it. I was just like, no, no. There's there's unfortunately quite a few episodes like that where I'm just like, I I, I remember this. I'm like, oh, why is this episode? Oh, is this episode? No. I'm like you're in. This. That's in season six. I want to say. Yeah, it's something like that. Five and I, I think that's... it's like they're divided between like five and six. 
I think one's oh, in one and the other's in the other uh, season. Okay, Fairhaven is in six, and Spirit oh, Folk then they're is both in six. six. Yeah. yeah, they're both six. Um, so, they're both bad. So, what do we got for season six? Equinox Part Two, I don't like. Survival Instinct, I actually like that one. That's Ronald Lee Moore's episode. Barrage of the Dead is weird, but I kind of like it. And um, yeah, it's we- he. He's a weird thing, right? It's weird because Balana has a existential life crisis where she goes to the afterlife of the Klingons, right? Yes. There is an episode in season seven where seven of nine is like, do you believe in the Klingon afterlife? Because she she needs her cortical node replaced. And she's like, oh, do you believe in the, the afterlife? And Valana's like, hmm, I don't really know. I'm like, bitch, last season, you literally went to hell, Klingon hell. And you're like, <laughs> well, I don't know <laughs> if this, this is real. Yeah, but Andy, it's you Voyager, continuity. <laughs> yeah, it's just, um, Jesus Christ, you idiot. Uh, Tinker Tanner, Doctor Spy, which is the one where the Doctor has uh, imaginings. I think that one's fun. It's not. A I, great I like episode. that. It's, fun. it's a. Yeah. I, I. I have a huge tolerance for anything Picard was in. Um, I, I, and I, I do. Ha- apart from one episode, one episode I really don't like with the Doctor is uh, they find aliens who are just haughty, stuck up, but they they hear oh, the Doctor no! sing. I like that one mostly for the scene between him and um, him and Janeway. I don't think it's a bad episode. I just don't enjoy watching it. I don't know what it mm. is about it. I just don't like... I think it's because I find the alien race just infuriatingly oh, they're, they're, irritating. Oh, they're so, so one note. Yes, um, that's probably why so, I don't like it. Next one is Alice, where Tom fucks his spaceship. Uh, yeah, uh, that's just... Um, oh, what's the what's the Stephen King movie? Uh, Cl- Christine. Clarice? Christine. It's just that. Mm. It's just um, Christine. It's like... Then, eh. Then there's Riddles, which is Tuvok uh, gets neurological damage. That's actually decent because it's a that, nice him and Neil. Yes, that is a fun episode. I like that one. It's quite a sad one as well. We talked about that one last week, actually. Mm. Dragon's Teeth, which is about... Oh, God, I remember that. The space corridor is in the... No. Uh, it's, once... it's, it's pretty... It's, I'd say that's a standard Voyager myth yeah, episode. Yeah. It's not bad. Um, it's just like you go, eh. One Small Step, which is they find... Oh, yeah, they find the first space pod thing, that which... One's... Okay. I didn't like Chakotay in that. He was the right dick. Um, he usually is. Uh, Voyager Conspiracy, where Seven of Nine think I like, somehow... I, like I, I I get the... If it had just been Seven in that, who was the thing, I would have liked that a lot more. It's when everyone else was acting like a fucking moron. I think it's because, like, Seven of Nine's so convincing. You can... Like, you know what would... You know what I, I would have loved that episode to be? I would have loved that episode... To instead of the alien, you know the alien that uses the catapult. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, think yeah, yeah, yeah. You should have had the special guest for that episode of Alex Jones, <laughs> because that that would have been that would have been perfect. That would have been perfect. An episode about conspiracies. <laughs> Seven of Nine's talking fucking crazy, well, and Alex, Alex Jones, Jones is like, thing? maybe, maybe a catapult. <laughs> yeah, he was a thing back then. Well, he's been oh, a he thing was. for a while. Yeah, I'm pretty sure um, he was. Cool, good for him. Uh, I would have, Path- I would have really liked that. Pathfinder, which is the Barclay episode, I like that. Um, I, I, yeah, but the Barkley ones, great. I like Barkley a lot. He's a great. Uh, Fairhaven, no, no blink of an eye, which is the one that we're they're on the the thing That's that. A, I skipped that, but that is a good episode. That, I do like it, but I I like that a lot until I realized uh, un- until I saw a thing that was like breaking down how it um the writers secretly um admitted to ripping off a book, uh, an existing <laughs> site, like just ripping it off wholesale. Which was written by um, <laughs> um, Bob Ford's father. It doesn't mean it's not a good episode, but it just means yeah. the people who did it are scummy, which yeah. I can believe. Uh, Virtuoso, which is the one you were talking about with the Doctor. Memorial, that time that they fucked with your oh. brain and made... That's a, I hate that episode. I, I, send that, I send a DM to you after I watch that episode because the message is not a bad one. The message is, don't forget the past. Mm. The, the, the implications of the episode, which is a problem Voyager has frequently, is there is a device that lets people relive a massacre as the people who cause the master massacre that caused them post-traumatic stress disorder because it makes them feel how the people felt who did it. So yeah. there's a massacre on this planet where an alien race goes uh they, it's a panicked war zone and they gun down a load of civilians and they start erasing the evidence and stuff like that N- not a bad episode but the premise behind it and jane we goes we're gonna leave this device up so more people can suffer post-traumatic stress disorder i generally hear post-traumatic stress disorder not a good thing no no people don't really recommend it uh for your daily dose of healthy psychology 
yeah, mo- some people uh, don't survive post-traumatic stress disorder. No, literally, they don't. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's quite dark. Um, so so I don't see which is... that on people yeah. just because of a memorial uh, yeah, for something fine. that happened two hundred years. No, you can don't you forget. can have a you can have well, up a, a memorial, but just don't inflict that that trauma onto people. I, Holy I shit! I would have written on top of it. Just just write a book. Could you imagine uh, if there, there there are so many bad things to interpret from that? Like, what if mm. instead it's like, oh, you could experience what the Holocaust was like? Like, no, Yay! yeah, no, I don't know. And you no, you no said to me, what if the Klingons had gone by and they just went, yeah. ah, good times? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My 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 thing was like, if the Klingons had experienced that, they wouldn't give a shit. They'd be like, we killed uh, a load of civilians. Well, I guess they're going to Stovacor because they died as warriors. Bog. Good for them. <laughs> Gives it a yeah. thumbs up. Um, Jem Hadar wouldn't care. The Borg, it probably wouldn't affect the Borg. No, I'd love but... the Jem Hadar, but just like, so they failed. Yeah. Moving on. Yeah, they didn't win, <laughs> so they died. Um, Sunkatsi, which is the one with the D- Wayne Johnson in it. That's a bad episode, but that's it's a, silly. That, that's a bad episode there entirely, so they can have the rock at the height of his rockness. It did have Jeffrey Coombs in it, though. Uh, it did. It did. Well, like, it, he can only do so much, Andy. Oh, no, no, I'm not saying it made it better. I'm just saying uh, that was another fact about the episode, which is a positive. The rest mm. of it is just Seven of Nine fights the rock in a cage match. And it's like, what? Why? Why not? <laughs> Why? Uh, I, collect- I think the the mm. big show was used more effectively than the rock was. <laughs> just a tad. Um, collective, which is where they introduced the board kids. I like happy that. Ichab, right. whose life is full of joy. Um, uh, spirit folk, which is <laughs> we the, talked about that fair, fair the hologram breaks episode, and then it ends with just like, and the holograms are now semi sentient. He's the because thing because we we've don't seen, want to reset the game. We've seen next gen with the episode with um, uh, Moriarty. It's yeah. that, but not as good. And no, it's that really with, without racial stereotypes. It, it's that where it's less like, hey, um, hey, it's a, it's a case of, hey, it's this guy, yeah, and he's fully sentient. It's that without that. It's like that. Yes. It's just like, listen, we're playing this game and we don't want to reset anything. I know, right? <laughs> could we, could we just like leave it and just have the game characters react like they know we're real? Yeah, yeah. sure. Um, and thank Christ, that's the last Fairhaven episode. Um. Oh, I, uh, oh, that's it's rare. I take offense at Irish stereotypes, but boy howdy, written by Brian Fuller. Fuck you, Brian Fuller. <laughs> um, you piece of shit. Um, ashes to ashes. Oh, I remember this. Like a dead woman comes back to life, and uh, like she got rebuilt into another um species. I didn't you know like, why I, didn't I love don't that like, one. You know why you don't like it? Why? Because it's a Harry Kim doesn't get the girl again. Oh episode. yeah, it is. Oh, another it's another one. Harry. It's a Harry episode. Oh, it's Harry. a Harry Kim gets cooked again. I've been meaning to listen to his podcast because apparently, like him and um, Robert um, McNeil, Duncan McNeil, um, do like a review of Voyager, and it's just like anytime they get to a <laughs> Harry episode, it's just like Garrett Wang just going like, "Kill me, kill me, kill." Me. I didn't I, yeah. want to do it. I asked them to promote him. They wouldn't promote him. So, like, they told him someone has to be the Ensign. Why? Why does someone have to be well, the Ensign? To, to, to be fair, you can't <laughs> promote people. You can't, right? They, did it, with, they like, did it to the, Tom. They demoted him the, and then they promoted him. The, the, that's the annoying thing. They shouldn't have promoted <laughs> anybody on the ship because you can't. Because it's like, you have a set amount of crew. The only way you can get promoted is if somebody dies. Mm. That's the only way. There so should I, have I been don't... a thing. It just like lower deck characters had to fight like the command crew for <laughs> supremacy. I would have watched. Well, like that. blood sports, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to get knives and stuff. Yeah, no, it's if it's a Harry Kim episode, it's it's always rough. Yeah. I don't think it's it, it might be because like Hollywood was a bit uh, naughty back then with how they portrayed Asian characters. But I think it's just also in keeping with the Harry Kim character of Harry Kim just being a weenie. Unfortunately, <laughs> just being was... quote. A weenie. No, you, you can't. You can't tell me that Harry Kim ever really had the episode where he wasn't a fucking weenie. They even had the episode where, like, Carrie, you're taking you're taking your first command. Now, normally, that's the, a, a growth episode show. Command yes. is hard, but you can grow into it. Like Nog got that. Yeah. Fucking yeah. Nog. Whereas Harry gets, well, you've taken command. You are a poor fit for command, sir. <laughs> He even says that. He's like, I can't do this. It's like, it's And then Seven's there just like, no, you can't. Yeah. Yeah. 
Such <laughs> the people who were desperate to have him take over the ship then mutinied against him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Harry. Um, let's see. Then there's Child's Play, which is the bore. Oh, yeah. Each Heb's next episode where his parents want to turn him into a child bomb. That one's okay. Yeah. Um, Good Shepherd. I never liked that one. The one with the three Lower Decks characters who were all it, assholes. Yeah, it's it's uh, the Lower Decks episode of Next Gen, but not as good. Yeah, and it's like, it always, it throws in that, like, look, I am a super genius who's super socially whatever, but I'm also incredibly arrogant and cruel and mean to everyone around me. I yes. get that that's a nerd stereotype, but the it's a really negative one that I, I think is just painfully overused. Um, in media it's used a lot mm, oh, it mm. feels like it's used a lot yeah uh live fast and prosper where two common impersonate Jane and tubak i like that episode a lot uh the oh yeah 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 that is that is a really I, fun one i love when when, when, he's, um, when, when mikey the, says into mm. uh like impersonate what mikey means is not on the ship they just nope. go around other planets conning people yep. in shitty starfleet uniforms going ah yes we're from starfleet uh, give us dilithium and we'll help you. Ha ha ha! That one's a fun one. I like that one. Yeah, no, it's really. F- I really like when um the, the the guy playing Tuvok gets way too into it. Oh my god! Yeah, he's so he's having so much fun, especially yeah. when he meets the real Tuvok as well. Yeah, he's like this is illogical. He's like Tuvok's like fuck off. <laughs> yeah, the Vulcan no. everyone was like bullshit. Yeah, fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> um, Muse Taurus is stranded on a Bronze Age planet and is a muse for a playwright. I don't remember that one. It's also, Kim is missing. Of course, he is. Yeah, it's it's not <laughs> a great one. Um, it's it's. A, I think it's an interesting idea. It's like, what if uh, the Starfleet interacted with um, Greek poets? You know, mm. people who wrote who did theater back in the Greek age. It's like it's it's fine. I don't again. I don't hate it. I don't really. I, it's meh. Meh. I, I'm I'm just after reading a sentence saying like one of the typical Voyager storylines, according to critics, was. Harry Kim kidnapped by aliens. <laughs> <laughs> you can't um, say it was sexist against the ladies, right? It wasn't the female in what, the stress, it was the what, Asian. What about stress. that one planet where he was kidnapped by a planet of succubus that, who then like tried to like drain his juices? Yeah, I remember that one. How no, <laughs> it, it's what it should have just panned over. Someone should do an edit of that one where they, when Harry realizes and it does a quick pan to the right and it's just the Futurama death by schnoo snoo scene. Yeah, but what they what I'd love to do is like Harry Kim reacts to Harry Kim episodes. Just like you just <laughs> have him like looking at it in a screen and then you edit in shots of reaction shots of Harry just looking like oh, kill me. I hate my uh, life. Why Fury. do they do this to me oh. every week? Fury, return of understand. old lady Kess. Old lady Kess, who's angry because she forgot why she left the ship. She's been gone for like two years. How is she that old already? Uh, I, I mean, think O'Compen's age quickly. I yeah, think but she got said. like she, I, I. She was like four. Her lifespan's nine, and they don't start aging like aging, aging until they're well, eight. Look, Mikey, learning how to do uh, like um, psychic shit really takes it out of you. She became a god. Why is she, she aging did. at all? I don't. I don't know. <laughs> uh, oh, I, lifeline! It, it, was, it was it was a bad way of getting Kess back in the show. Oh, it was so episode. bad, and the, her life went so down the tubes afterwards. No. Um, she had a lot of really like she got uh, arrested for flashing a twelve year old or something like that. Oh, I remember hearing about that. Oh, yeah. um, no. lifeline. Doctor goes to save his creator. That's a good one. I like that one. I like that one. Yes, uh, though I, I, like... I do think it's weird that the Doctor Zimmerman there isn't played in a similar way to the Dr. Zimmerman that appeared on DS9, who was going mm. around and take... He was, he was trying to make Juliana into the next uh, EMH. Like, he's he's a little... He's, they don't act exactly the same. Yeah. As, I, I, as I, I, he's quite the womanizer, yeah. having sex with Lita and everything like that. Trying to. Or nearly, him, nearly, but, yeah. Um, but, like, I, you know, he's dying here, so he's probably looks like, oh, all my negative aspects are just coming to the surface. Maybe. And, he's a, and, like, he's, aged he's now well, depressed. Though. He's all now depressed because, like, the EMH has, like, failed so many times. Yes. Yeah, I, I do like that episode. It's, mm. I watched it recently, um, obviously, this week. The Haunting of Deck 12. I watched that mm. today. It's I, meh. I don't remember that one. Uh, they go into a gas cloud, and uh, ne- Neelix is telling the kids, uh, basically, what happened in the episode, and then he plays off as, Aha, you got me. It wasn't real. Yeah. And then it uh, was... I- yeah, it's a, a gas anomaly. An alien sneaks on board and Uni- tries to get Janeway oh. off the ship. 
by uh, using the the intercom system. It's like Captain Janeway will come to the bridge. Captain Janeway will leave the ship, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's, like, it's, it's fine. You say that to Janeway. Captain Janeway will turn around and think, Captain Janeway will commit suicide by opening the airlock and killing everyone in it. Don't fuck she with Captain Janeway. <laughs> she don't care. No, like, you don't fuck with Cisco because he has no limits about how far he will take it if he thinks it's justified. You don't w- fuck with Janeway because she has no limits. Oh, I thought you were going to say she has less moral compass. <laughs> oh, definitely. She has murdered more people than him. And he yeah. was involved in an actual murder-suicide curve or up thing. <laughs> and he, he, well, uh, the difference with Cisco is, like, he, there are times where you, you can see him, like, going, oh, no. And, like, no. what she did after murdering Tuvix was go for a walk. Yeah, it's like, I got my friend back. I, well, I, I want someone to edit in and just like, where she's like, you just see her back walking down the hall. And it's supposed to be dramatic. And just someone edit in like. <laughs> ah, da, 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 da. Just like, she's so happy. Um, oh, yeah. And last one, Unimatrix Zero, the final nail in the board coffin for me. I don't know. It had quite a few nails previously. Yeah, but this was like, the Borg are this obsessed with a bunch of individuals banging psychically. Yeah. And then, like, hey, now it's a, like, just, like, I don't think, like, I don't think the the previous Borg episodes are necessarily bad. Like, Dark Frontier is, has a lot of good to it. Um, yeah, I would it, agree. I think it humanizes the Borg way too much because it, this is, this is when the Borg became about the Queen. Well, you could argue, like, uh, that it was First Contact, the movie that... They was introduced... The, it was the first... It, they set up the coffin. Yeah, they set up, they set they up, set up, up the, the coffin. coffin. They set up the coffin, like... Voyager lined up all the nails. Vo- Voyager <laughs> did the really dark thing of, like, having people stand in front of the coffin and then, like, pushing them in. Oh, and having cement being poured in after them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then Picard came along and just, like, was the one digging... The, they didn't dig a <laughs> shovel. They got they had a they had a, a, a full excavator going. No, no, no. They didn't do that. What they did was... Have you seen that video of a man trying to blow up an ant nest in his garden by putting <laughs> gas into it and throwing the match down? And the gun just explodes. It's that. And then that. looking at That's you saying, like, isn't it genius? Do yeah, you see? perfect. Do you I see? I see. <laughs> I see. Uh, yeah, but, Unimatrix um, Zero, not good. I love the fact that the, the Borg Queen is like, this is a Borg cube. It has 14,000 drones on. Only one of them is infected. Looks at Janeway. Blows it up. And I, if I was Janeway, I'd be like, well, that's 14,000 people now saved from not being the Borg. Oh, I hate that episode so much. Because I'm like, hey, here's Janeway. What's our plan? We're going to be turned oh. into Borgs <laughs> and then turn back with no side <laughs> effects whatsoever. Could you imagine if, like, Next Generation Picard saw that? He'd be like, what the fuck is this bullshit? <laughs> yeah, he just opened fire. <laughs> I had to go through psychological trauma. My brother beat my ass in a French cornfield to get me on the other side of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he killed people in Wolf 359. Yes, but the actual process of losing your humanity well, like, is not a good like, thing. In no way were Tuvok... What was it? it was Tuvok... And Taurus and her. Taurus and her. And at no point during the being made into a Borg drone were any of them mutilated to a point that was not repairable. They they were really lucky that they didn't have any limbs amputated yeah. as the Borg are known to do. Yeah, or their eyes removed or yes. large sections of their skull. No, no. They had implants, but not too much implants, the surface level, because the queen's a dick. Yeah. But, mm. Okay. So, like, at least yeah. Seven has an excuse because the entire point was for her to be sexually attractive. And yes. That that that's why she was brought in. So they yes. couldn't add, they couldn't chop off her arm or give her like a permanent eye implant or anything. I, like I that. don't know. I'd I'd still do it when she had all the Borg implants. Oh God. And, you know, I I, I saw something someone say it is like they wish that her becoming more human had been like a season long thing. And I was just like, if Voyager cared about continuity, I would agree with that, but it doesn't. Yeah, it wants to no, get to uh, yeah. point A to B to C, except for like things like the Doctor or Seven's like core episodes or something like that. Wait, but it's, it's it's trying to do a. Wi- I think it was always trying to do this not very well balanced thing between doing mm. voyages. Um, oh, sorry, the next gen's like every episode is like its own individual story and DS 9s uh, like overall story, and I don't think it meshed it very well. I think it was a bad uh, attempt to do what DS Nine was doing and still do what uh, Next Gen did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm on to episode uh, season seven, uh, the oh. episode uh, four repression. Uh, it's I've only got to the start of the episode, and oh. Tom has wa- Tom's once again doing the thing of I'm going to take you on a date, Balana, and Balana's like, oh cool, what are we going to do? Something that I want. As they go to the cinema, I'm like, 
Tom Paris is the ultimate Chad because he doesn't give a shit what <laughs> Balana wants. He just does the things that he wants to do and takes her along with him. And she buys him, gets him gifts like a TV set and things that he likes. Tom never reciprocates. He goes, ah, I give you some flowers. Yeah, they're not a. They're they're one of those couples that exist because they're both trapped in a ship and can't you know get with anyone else. It feels like it. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm looking at these ones. So you got Unimatrix Part 2, Imperfection. Yeah. I, oh, that's an each heavy one. That's not bad. Um, yeah, Imperfection was kind of fine. The one where so. Tom and Balana get married, which I actually think was kind of a nice examination of their bad relationship. But then they follow it up with Repression, which is like, and now we're moving on. Because um, yeah. there's a lot of Tom and Balana in Season 7. Hang on. Oh, yeah, the previous... Yeah, I skipped the last episode because it was the race episode. I'm like, I don't care about wacky races no. in space. And then, oh, I like next one. It's the one where the doctor gets kidnapped and forced to work in a hospital. Oh, that was a good one. Yeah, that's a I good really one. I like that because the doctor does some dark shit. And then at the end, it's just like, were they broken? Uh, nope. Oh. Well, fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's an interesting aspect to his character. It makes him very human-y. Yeah, which is it's cool. like when um, Data nearly murdered that guy. Which guy? In, when he got kidnapped for the toys, for the collection. Oh, and then no. the guy was nuts. And he was like, I cannot allow this to continue. Opens fire. Goes to open fire. They beam it over. Just like, uh, Data, <laughs> this gun was in mid-fire. Huh. What about that? <laughs> and then walks off. <laughs> yeah, everyone's like, "Hmm, should we be concerned about the killing machine?" No. Okay. <laughs> no, he's no. And it's then they're like, "Are you here to mock me?" No, I don't mock. I'm only an android. I nearly <laughs> murdered you. Yeah. For the good of other people, but. But for maybe for a little bit, he definitely has maybe a little bit of lore in him. I think. Oh, I think like well, like Data, like eventually when they do the emotion thing, the first time he feels a real emotion, it's without an emotion chip. That's right, he, yeah. He gets completely furious at a, at a Borg and fucking murders well, it. <laughs> well, that, that's because, like, Law's beaming negative emotions into him, to be fair. No, that was before then. Was because, it? Like, the, the, the emotion was predates that. Like, and then it was his obsession with trying to get his emotions that um, he ended up kind of fall, bumping into Law because he kept on trying to repeat it. I thought that was still Descent where he's going, stop, stop it, stop, stop. I thought that was Descent Part 1. Uh, Descent Part 1, but I, Lore, I remember reading that the emotion was supposed to be, like, spontaneous, but then Lore is involved in the rest of it, the, the episode. Oh, like, okay. Because what Lore does then is, like, he, he goes to Lore looking for the emotions. All right, Lore I have, haven't seen and Descent know. Part 1 in for a yeah. while, so I, I, my, my, my memory just told me that it was all because Lore was beaming it in. Yeah. Okay. And it's supposed to be like, oh, it's spontaneous and blah, blah, blah. And then it's like, oh, emotion shift, we won't come back to this any time in the show. No, we did it for generations, though. Yeah, we did it. We did it in the film, and then we killed him in a terrible film. Yeah. Ah, here's the thing. I'll take uh, I'll take Nemesis over most Star Trek of today. <sighs> Think about that. Think about that. I'll do I it because because it has the Romulan lower Senate. decks over Nemesis. I I, I uh, can't no, I've say seen more. I haven't tried it yet. Yeah. Now I've seen now I've seen the other side of lower decks. I'm just kind of like. We've hit it. We've we've at least got something watchable. <laughs> Once you get past the first half of it, you get into yeah. something watchable. <laughs> I still I still need to try it. I still need to promise I, myself. To I try am it. very curious because I I definitely feel like your reaction will be like, hmm. But I also think you're like, no. I can see how this is better than the absolute turd that was the first episode. Yeah, I I saw that Angry Joe uh, reviewed episode three of um uh, not beyond what's it called Strange New Worlds and he said, Dude. oh, it's good. So I'm I'm thinking it's like mediocre next generations i i am the best. same people who told me like lower decks is watchable are the ones who i saw saying like oh my god it's a live action show that's good and i'm just like i'll probably try one episode and see but if the first episode is re is not like oh my god it's actually great i'm probably going to abandon it until it's finished yeah i hear the um, orville's not too long till it's out I hear. Orville soon. I have to catch up in season two. I've only seen half of season two. Oh, okay. Um, it, it had Orville a decent had, ending. I remember that. Yeah, Orville stopped trying. To, when Orville, Orville, as long as it was never trying to be funny, was a solid show. Yes. Yeah. Uh, definitely. The problem is it occasionally stopped and said, "Like I'm sick of Farling. I'm here to tell you a joke." Well, I, I think it's because the, the studios were telling him to do that more so than anything mm -hmm. else. I think he wanted to do a straight show, but they were like, "Yep, Seth MacFarlane, you're funny," and Seth MacFarlane's like, "I know, but." And everyone else is like, no, you're not. <laughs> you're not that funny. Other people write jokes. Funny. You know, yeah. Uh, let's just do a straight <laughs> show. Because he actually give a shit about that. And he was on Enterprise. Mm. Wasn't he? He had a cameo. Mm. 
I'm happy he was. I wish I was on Enterprise. It's not like the I best wish, Star Trek show. I wish but... I was on anything. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I was on anything. You want to be in Picard, Mikey? We can get mm. you on for the next season. You can go oh. and ask why. Ev- ask every person on the show why what? he's terrible. Just... No, no, just going on. Why? 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 Why do this? Why? <laughs> Uh, I, I will say that it's nice to go through and rewatch Voyager, even though it's not there are episodes I am skipping. It is still it's kind of a comfort watch to just kind of mm. watch it again. It's clearly not as good as DS Nine. Uh, I'd say generally it's not as good as Next Gen. It's, it's clearly not as good as DS Nine and other unsurprising news. I know, right? Water being wet. Mm. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, it's still fun to to watch it. I tell you what, I've never done. I've never sat down and watched all of the original series. I think that might be hard to do, because I I think think a lot of the episodes, like, especially the ones where it's like, because the budget was so so low, it was just, shall we go to the the rest of the sets? Oh, there's Mm. a back in time set to use? Okay, we'll do that. And there's a lot of that. We're going to a quarry. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I think that might make it a little bit rough. I have seen a few episodes, like Mm. the Gorn episode and the Triple episode, and one or two other ones, and they're okay. Yeah, I've seen, like, the, like, top ten best Star Trek episode ones, which are, Mm. like, honestly very well done. Um, I've also seen one where just, like, oh, the Shatner memes are real. (laughs) (laughs) Is that the one where, like, he's sweating profusely, and he's like, There's one where he's, like, I've seen the last episode of the show, which is, um, uh, where... He's possessed by a woman who's gone crazy because, and like, <laughs> but it's like one. It opens with the like, so women can't be starship captains. No, oh they God. can't. And like the the way he says that is kind of like, well, no, they can't. Ah, oh. um, and then um, then she possesses him, and he's suddenly like, there's overacting, and holy shit. Oh no, <laughs> just like my God, I can't even describe it. You have to see it for yourself. <laughs> But fortunately, I'm, it's like continuity means nothing that you can watch in any order you want. I'm thinking to myself, is it? Should I at some point maybe get uh, Stargate SG One on DVD or Blu-ray? Yes, it's a great show. I remember it being really good. It's a, it's a, it's season one. Like many season ones, has its ups and its downs, but it has a surprisingly yeah. high number of ups. It is yeah. the weakest series. I uh, well, it's the weakest series until we get to the kind of we wanted to end the show, but then sci-fi wouldn't let us. Yeah, like I, um, I, st- I remember the Anubis stuff being a bit stretched out, but still being yeah. good. I rewatched uh, Stargate like semi regularly. Like, it is, it is pretty fun. Mm. I yeah. even Atlantis, like Atlantis, has some big flaws, but man, you need they to have think some that that's Jason very Momoa li- in that, yeah. right? Yeah, very weird, but like very likable characters, which I think is super important for a show like that. I don't think it did as well though, did it? No, 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 it didn't. Like it was supposed to get a movie. I think it was supposed to get a movie, and then they canceled that. Ah, right. I don't. I never watched Universal. Universe looked like Universe it was just was the dark version of Stargate. I'm dire. Like, uh, it it was like it. Fucking dire. Was it? Oh no. It was atrocious. Lol. It was so try hard. Oh no. It was so fucking try hard. The first thing oh. you see are two soldiers fucking. It's oh like, my god. Why? Why? Because we're soldiers and fucking. <laughs> oh my! It was so fucking childish. It was so fucking childish. <laughs> Damn son. Very bad. <laughs> I wonder how cheap it is to get Stargate. I'll need to have a look. Yeah, need to have a look. I think it's worth picking up. There's so many like fantastic it. episodes. And it's better continuity than most of Star Trek at the time. <laughs> I did see a video today that said the only character who didn't take a break throughout the show was uh, Chris Judd. Yeah. He was there for all 11 seasons, so 11 years of the show. So um, I was like, damn. Uh, uh, what's her name? Um, Amanda Tapping. She was in it the whole time. No, she was. Uh, she went out for a little bit because she got prego. For a little bit. Uh, it was during the uh, Claudia Black arc where Claudia Black came in for uh, a bit. Well, that, I don't think that counts because that's just like, I, I think. Well, I suppose she, she was, she, she was in... replaced because she was prego. Yeah, but she wasn't replaced. She was still in the show. It wasn't like she moved. Like, two of them quit the show. Yeah, but they yeah, kept Daniel coming quit back. The show and then he came and, back. Yeah, and then um, O'Neill quit, and then he came back for cameos. Yeah, so like I, I think it, I think Chris Judge was in every episode, which is a different thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably what they meant. Mm. Yeah. Um. But yeah, Star Trek is weird. <laughs> yeah, Star Trek is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mikey, uh, where can people find you on the uh, internet? We, if you we do have found? a question, Andy. We oh my question. god! Oh shit! Oh fuck! Calm okay. down. 
Uh, we won from Andreas. So uh, I put subversive messages into the title. Did you? Oh my god! Did you really? What's that uh, mean? This week I finished reincarnating. I've given up trying. Uh, this week I finished the time I was reincarnated as a slime. So solves oh. a lot of conflict in board meetings. It really does. Mm. Um, onward to the question. My understanding is that creating the molds for plastic toys is the most expensive part of producing said toys. Yes, it's the making of the steel molds. That's um, what the man says. The man least. says. Since mm. not even Takara seems to be able to preserve and archive all their molds, uh, C1, G1 Dinobots, what do you think happens to all the molds for third-party companies? I think it's a bit of a different animal because most of the lost molds come from a, a bygone age. <laughs> yeah, I, um, when they where didn't you, really care. Uh, and they didn't think they could reissue old toys back then. And they also didn't have um, electronic CAD models to refer back to if they if mm. something really needed to be replaced. That's um, true, yeah. They usually don't own factories. or st- Third parties usually don't own factories and storage costs money. On top of that, these companies release a lot of toys. Fan Toys produced 46 unique molds in nine years. And oh, BBTS fuck. lists over 80 companies on their website. Yet reissues pop up frequently. Last year's Fan Toys and Sex Convent molds from 2015. And I heard the argument made that a mold will only be profitable after the second use of it. Um, that is true. Uh, most molds, there's a reason. Not it's not universally so because many toy lines don't do repaints and retools the way we do. Mm. Um, but um, for mainline Hasbro, they make a lot of their money. Like they have to sell a certain amount to make money on the first run, and then with the retool, it's a much simpler process or a re-release or a repaint. Much much simpler process, and there's a lot more more money earned per figure. Yeah. Now this applies obviously to third parties as well, but because they charge generally more for their figures in smaller production costs, they do make their money back faster. But again, like once you get to the second run of a mold, you do start making more money. Um, I I think this one's pretty simple because I think the difference here is, uh, they don't they don't produce molds in the kind of volume that a mainline toy company would. Hmm. Um, which means they pre- presumably own the molds and can then rent the factories. Makes um, you wonder, like, does someone just have, like, a third-party company boss or something? Do they just have them somewhere in I mean, their offices or whatever? Uh, they, New Age they must are. have, like, an infinite number of that Cyclonus. <laughs> like, they've just got, like, a pile of, like, we've made every mold. Oh, my God. Um, well, no, no, because, yeah, because they've reissued the, not massively different versions of that toy. There'll be some differences, but... Um, yeah. But the they've got two unique toolings, which Fuck, is think the, how uh, many molds uh, Bandai have for Gundam oh model kits, because they have God. Gundam model kits from, like, 70 years ago. Well, not 70 years ago, but from yeah. 1970. They, like, they're still reusing parts from old yeah. kits as well. Um, yeah. So like, they must have fuck tons of metal molds just hanging about. Yeah. If you ever, if that's how yeah. they do. Um, but they like again, like you're talking about something with like so much money behind it and everything else. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and again, like a lot of this is going to be stored in CAD models as well uh, for sure. stuff that's like, okay, we can melt down this mold and use it for something else. But if we need the CAD model, we've got it. Mm. Um, especially since uh, older reissues have are going through a quiet phase for the most part at the moment. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um. So I think it like. Like, 46 unique molds sounds a lot for, for fan stories in nine years. <laughs> but again, consider how many figures Transformers has produced in the last nine years. Yeah. Hundreds. Hundreds and hundreds. Three. <laughs> All Optimus Prime. Um, <laughs> so, I think I think it's just a bit of a different animal, you know? Um, that makes sense. That's like, a logical answer. That's my, that's my opinion, anyway. I do think... I think every mold is made with a retool in mind or a repaint. Like at least one reuse, um, because it's. I don't think it's a case of that's where the money's made. That's where the most money is made. Mm, I can see that because it's got the less cost. Any other any other thoughts on that, Andy? Uh, I don't think so. I think you covered it quite mm. uh, quite well. And yeah, that's that's us then, I guess. Oh, Unless you've got uh, one. I I don't. I don't. Mm. Uh, people, where can people find you on the internet, Mikey? You can find me on Twitter with Irish Paley, and you can contact us up on the Moonbase 2 at twitter.com, or uh, you can contact us on the Moonbase 2 at gmail.com, or on Facebook, on Libsyn, on all of those lovely, 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 lovely places. What about you, Andy? You can find me on Twitter and Twitch and YouTube as Decade Andy. Uh, Decade is in the flesh, not the decade. I'll throw that out. Uh, you can find us on the Moonbase 2 forums or on Twitter, iTunes, Facebook, Libsyn. Uh, YouTube is Moonbase 2 Transformers Podcast. Otherwise, it's just Moonbase 2. 
Uh, you can find us on patreon.com slash moonbase2. And if you do $2 each month, you get the extended fi- uh, version of From the Files of Teletron 2. You also get it early, and you also get the Moonbase Woo where we talk about non transformary things in more detail. Like we did with Star Trek Today. Hmm. <laughs> 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 but this, but this um, wasn't a dedicated episode. Technically, yeah, we, we could still go got through and the... do an entire watch of Voyager and talk about Voyager. We did. Because we've never we done still that. Got... Yeah, oh god, yeah, no. Um, we could do what we did with DS9, best and worst episode three season. Oh my god. Um, we still got the comic show to come out publicly, don't we? Yeah, well, I've, 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 yeah, yeah. here's the dumb thing. Uh, it's public on YouTube. I just haven't put it public on the uh, the websites. So I'll, I'll be cool. getting that done. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, I haven't had time. Yeah. Also, this is completely unrelated, but holy shit, the Turtles mecha models. Did you see what those? What about them? No, no. Did no. you? See? Oh, I show you now. Holy shit. Oh, okay. These are licensed as well. Oh, no, I, I do know what these are. As soon as I clicked on the thing, I saw them. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they're interesting. I, it's a neat the idea. The strangest thing about these is that the pilot figures are the 80s turtles. What's weird about that? Because these do not look like it, like they belong in the 80s universe. It's the crossover episode, you remember, that they did ages ago, which oh, people God. hate it? Hate it? Hate it I don't remember. I don't remember. Because it was in the middle of the, of the new show and I wasn't watching the new show. Oh. But man, these look cool. Yeah, they don't look bad. <laughs> I, love I always the, liked the, the turtles when they did mm. stupid like crossovers and stuff like oh, that. Like yeah, my yeah. my favorite turtles figures that I had were I had a mummy raff and I mm. had a vampire Donatello. No, nice. I thought they were pretty cool. I I like the Don the the Raphael one here with the like because it's raff. Just like I have fists. What do they do? They are holding larger fists. <laughs> it's you know it's raff as yeah. it should be. I require with a football helmet. His Rex yeah. head is a football helmet. <laughs> <laughs> Tills. There's Good some correct. interesting stuff even now you can do with them. Yep. Always have fun. Yeah. Or don't. Sometimes they just choose not to. Damn. Uh, the, who's got the fucking Wolverine claws? Is that Raph? That's Raph. Damn. That's some Wolverine claws right there, son. Woo. Sheesh. The, the sheesh. ancient Japanese art of stabbing. These totally aren't based off of uh, Gundam looks, by the way. No, no, no. Gundam's not releasing a toy with the exact same gimmick, and you don't know anything about it. I don't. I don't know anything about it. I drink yeah. ample amounts of bleach to make sure I don't know anything about this. <laughs> uh, but since we're done here, thanks everybody for coming on by. Uh, hopefully we'll see you next week. Hopefully there'll be some uh, more Transformers news. Until mm-hmm. next time, thank you, Mikey, for joining me once again. Um, yeah. All right, well, that's, that's good enough. You're welcome. Uh, so until next <laughs> week, everybody, uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ah.